Thomas Payne, Thomas Payne, Thomas Payne, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by... Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. It's Tuesday, and that means it's the day to ponder some thoughts, some heavy thinking. First of all, everyone has a photographic memory. Some just don't have film. And have you ever wondered why do psychics have to ask you for your name. Hmm. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on this Tuesday, March the 10th. Good morning, good morning. Oh, good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, and we're very, very happy to have you with us this morning on this Tuesday. And don't forget our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Call them at 734-6969. Wonderful people. Let's check over the river and through the wood. Gina, do we have... Have anyone on for our pledge this morning? You have Rotten on for the pledge of Mr. Michael Rogers on for the weather. Oh, they're waiting. All right, Rotten, if you would please, our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, thank you, my dear friend, and God's blessings to you and your wife. Have a beautiful day today, okay? That's everybody get out and vote today in the Burley. I would hope so. It's the voting for the Cashew County school bond issue today. And, Dal, thank you for that reminder this morning. What time did the polls open? Do I think know? they opened at 8 o'clock this morning, I believe. Okay, thank you. All right, sir. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to go to the weather forecast right now, and the weather is brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, and we want to say thank you very much to those wonderful folks at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. Whitney, send me some uh, new design tips. You can create a welcoming coffee table with books and other collectible objects, and it makes your house just look more friendly and a real home. Oh, my goodness, they've got everything over there for you at Cheney Flooring and Home Design, all the newly uh, refurbished furniture, and everything you need, new kitchens. They've got it all at Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. And now, here's Michael Rogers' weather. I have to remember that I'm 60 years old, and I've done this for 30 years, so how in the world can you describe a nice sunny day. There's only so many ways you can do that in 30 years. So, that being said, yeah, it's going to be a nice sunny day. Here's the good news. Here's the really good news. You, you might hit 70 today. Yeah. Yeah, it's not even spring. And you might even hit 70. So, it's going to be nice today. Now, there are two types of weather people. There are technicians and then there are personalities. And one of the reasons why I kind of go back and forth with the weather because I was bound and determined that I wasn't going to sound like a technician. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be absolutely, mostly sunny. How about that? 68 for the high. 
41 for the overnight low. You got rain Wednesday night going into Thursday. Uh, the sprinklers will turn off on Thursday night, and you got yourself a nice weekend. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. Oh, my goodness, Michael Rogers weather. Look for the blue door at Cheney Flooring and Home Design. And, of course, Kyle and Whitney Cheney are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturdays 10 to 4, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley, 678-6945. Thank you very, very much. Oh, my, we've got a lot of people on the program this morning, uh, of which you have seen on all the national TV news shows. And uh, we've got uh, Mr. John Casey, great author with his book uh, called Dark Winter, talking about how we're going into a freezing period, not a, a warming period, like the government would like you to think. And then De Mr. Dan Kish talking about the absolute ridiculous waste of money on wind power. And then at uh, 10.30 this morning, Andrew Boston, he really has broken down the problems that we're having uh, with Iran in a book called Iran's Final Solution for Israel. So don't miss it. It's going to be a jam-packed program right up to the end. Hey, by the way, Sportsman for Fish and Wildlife, I want to remind you, my dear friend Jack Oiler gave me this 12th Annual Magic Valley Chapter Rally for Wildlife Banquet and Fundraiser is going to be coming up this weekend, Saturday, March 14th at the Canyon Crest Center in Twin Falls. And the preview of everything starts at 5.30, dinner at 6.45, and that is this weekend. Sportsman for Fish and Wildlife. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, also, a real quick reminder, Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Mm, I sail every Thursday at 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley with Merv May, Cade Roggy, and Lance Udy. And this is the sale that works for you. 10 o'clock every Thursday. Don't miss it. And for consignments or sailing, information call 678-9411 678-9411 Burley Livestock Sale Yard with a sale every Thursday don't you miss it a uh, quick reminder and for those that uh, didn't hear it yesterday and uh, they called yesterday afternoon on my cell phone the lunch bunch for Zeb's lunch bunch will be next Thursday on the 19th at Denny's restaurant at 11.30 and our thanks also to some of the folks that helped us with the gift cards and the door prizes, Walmart's, Miss Food King and Handsome Mortuary thank you very much hey, Safe Link Internet mm -mm -mm. Idaho's number one choice Choice for wireless internet, 17 years and counting. All you have to do to get on the program with SafeLink is just give them a call at 677-8000. That number again, 677-8000. First month free and free installation. No contracts, no credit checks, unlimited data. You call them and tell them Zeb sent you. SafeLink Internet at 677-8000. Call them today. And also our thanks go out this morning to wonderful people people at Daryl's Cleaners. We were over there yesterday and picked up some of my old rumply crumplies that aren't anymore. I mean, they are looking brand spanking new. That's how your clothes will look when you pick them up from Daryl's Cleaners or your uh, tablecloths, your drapes, everything. They do such a wonderful job at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Kevin and Cindy at Daryl's Cleaners. You stop in and see them today. Front page of major newspapers this morning. Front page of major newspapers this morning, especially the newspapers in New York City, showing pictures of a partial list of the 47 Republican senators that are being called traitors. I'm not making this up. I was so upset this morning early when uh, I turned on the news at 4 a.m. And many of the senators, whether it's uh, Ted Cruz, Rubio, McConnell, whatever, they're showing pictures of these various 47 senators that sent a letter of dispute regarding Obama's trying to make a treaty without going through the Senate. And the senators are right. Uh, I want to come right out and say the Democrats better start reading the Constitution. It says right here in Article 2, Section 2 of our Constitution, He, meaning the President, shall have power by and with the advice and consent 
of the Senate to make treaties, provided two-thirds of the senators present, present concur, pardon me. This president wants to go around and do everything on his own. And they sent a letter, and our own Times News had a headline in the paper that says, GOP tries to undercut nuclear deal with warning to Iran. They're telling Iran that they, the Senate, had better be advised what this president is doing. They'd better be told by the Constitution. And that Congress will look at and okay any deal Obama wants to make. He's not a king. I'm very proud, for the first time in a long time, of the GOP and especially these senators. And I'm really glad that they are standing up to Obama and telling him, no, you are not a king. And regardless of what the news media wants to call us, traitors, etc., we're going to do it according to the Constitution. Your thoughts, give me a jingle, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. What do you think about this? And uh, give me your thoughts on the Senate primarily backing Obama up and poking their finger in his chest and saying, wait a minute, you are the president, but you will go through us. Don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric, and they've got light bulbs of many, many kinds and different sizes. They've got the regular bulbs. They've got the high and low bulb, uh, wattage. They've got halogen bulbs. They've got all the compact fluorescent lights. They've got all your fluorescent light tubes, many, many colors. They've got it all for you. Go to the light. Go to the light at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call 678-0459. Now, they open the doors at 7. 7.30 in the morning till 5.30, Monday through Friday. And that's the place where they always provide warm winters and cool summers. Ramsey Heating and Electric serving you. Stop over and see them today. And I mentioned just a moment ago, and by the way, Gina, uh, for some reason we're sounding really fuzzy coming down the line this morning like we're over-modulating or something. If you could check on that, I'd appreciate it. I wish all the levels were perfect. <coughs> well, uh, something must not be too perfect or I wouldn't have said something. Uh, Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley. The home of Zeb's Lunch Punch, and we will be over there this next Thursday on the 19th. And uh, I want to remind you that you can get gift cards. What a great gift for your family members and your neighbors. Hey, here's a little thank you for taking care of our lawn while we were gone or whatever. And these are great presents. And Denny's Restaurant has two locations to serve you. 611 Overland in Burley and 291 Poline Road in Twin Falls. Brand new location serving you. Breakfast, oh, it's fantastic. Lunch, dinner, all the menu items, along with the great service at Denny's Restaurant. And we will be over there next Thursday for Zeb's Lunch Punch at 1130 at Denny's Restaurant. Everybody try to be there. All right, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. You know, this story has hit the national press and it's just got people scratching their head. And I know the exact area that this story happened and took place. I know the exact bridge that they're talking about. And it happened down in the Spanish Fork, Utah area. What in a nutshell happened is that a, a young mother had literally run off a bridge and very unfortunately she died in the accident as her car went down into the river turned over on its top but in the back seat strapped to a safety seat was her young daughter 18 months old and nobody knew that the car had gone into the river until the next day and then, after searching the car and getting the uh, deceased mother out, nobody knew that there was a child upside down in the car seat. And to make a long story short on this, four police officers that were in different locations around the car and standing on the banks of the river heard a voice, Help me. 
Help me. We're in here. Help me. This little bitty toddler, 18 months of age, was upside down in the car seat, unconscious, and every one of the officers heard the voice, help me, help me, we're in here. It is an unexplained miracle. The officers, when interviewed, had no explanation for the mysterious voice that appeared to come from inside the car. And the officers uh, have said, we don't know what we thought we heard. And one person in particular said, I'm not a typically religious guy. It's really hard to explain. It was definitely something. Where and why it came from, I'm not sure. The little baby is uh, in better condition this morning upgraded to stable and it looks like this little baby girl is going to make it and I certainly hope and pray so but the words help me help me we're in here are going to be etched in the minds and hearts of people down in the Spanish Fork Utah area for a long long time Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Kind of gives you a little chill, doesn't it? A little bit of a hair standing up on the back of your neck. Help me. Help me. We're in here. Mm. Barry Equipment and Rental, I want to remind you that they are renting the Doosan Loaders. Oh, they've got the big dudes over there at all three locations ready to serve you. They've got also the Doosan Excavators. they got the 3.5-yard loader and the 3.5-yard high-lift loader. And they've also got the Doosan two large excavators in stock, a 25,000-pound machine and a 48,000-pound big dude. Yes, they are big dudes, and they can get the job done for you. Berry Equipment and Rental, and they're located on South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and Highway 30 in Burley, 159 West Highway 30. Nick and the rest of the crew over there at the Burley location, check out all the coyote tractors, walker mowers, and the bobcats. They've got it all for you at Berry Equipment and Rental. You get a hold of them today. Oh, and uh, by the way, I was going to tell you too, Will Tran Incorporated with our old buddy Lucky Bourne at 529 F Street in Rupert. Um, they're looking for drivers, good drivers, and they've got a benefit package available after 60 days of employment, and they've got over-the-road positions available, and they both provide great home time, and they want uh, people with two years Class A driving experience and a clean driving record record required and apply online at willtraninincorporated.com or call them at 639-6411 that's Will Tran Incorporated and my buddy Lucky Bowen looking for really really good drivers at 529 F Street in Rupert 639-6411 the number to call all right give us a jingle 436-2244-1866-927-4587. That uh, story about that lady, and like I said, it's so sad that the young mother died, uh, went off the edge of the bridge, and I know, like I said, I know this bridge very well, ended up in the water upside down, and uh, then, of course, the voice helped me. We're in here, clear as day to four officers standing in various locations on the bank and also over by the car when they thought that the only person in the vehicle was the mother who was deceased. Whoa. All right, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Once again, I want to remind everybody, today is the big day to go vote in the Cache County School Bond election. Today is the day, so go to the polls and vote. And uh, they would appreciate a good, good turnout today for that school bond election. So please, stop over and exercise your right to vote. 
Um, I want to also remind you, too, while we're waiting for your phone calls coming in, I'm going to talk in just a minute about an Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, Veterans Administration Manager. This woman has got to qualify as one that is not real bright. We're going to talk about that in just a few moments. Don't forget Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley, next to Dot Foods, and Tim Vaughn, really, really nice guy. And you can call him for estimates at 431-7314 or go online, streamlineprecision.com. This is a family of companies providing construction, excavation, and fabrication services. And I talked to Tim the other day, and he said, man, we are really busy taking on a lot of jobs regarding trenching for pipelines and doing a lot of cement work for uh, dairies and ranches, mangers and feed alleys. And don't forget that Streamline Precision has manufacturing and contracting all under one roof, making coordinated, accurate, confidential, and consistent timelines to meet their clients' demanding needs. So please, call them for estimates on work you need done. They are the professionals. Call Tim at 431-7314, Streamline Precision and Burley, serving you. All right, it's your turn. Give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. We can talk about the uh, Veterans Administration or other stories that we've had, but I couldn't believe this one when I uh, saw this this morning. Well, we'll take the call. First and foremost, you are important to us. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, my friend. Hello, killed man. Hey, as many things as this president and his cronies have done as far as treasonous, and nobody has spit a word out about it, there's no way, I, it just drives me nuts that they can turn around and call other people treasoners, you know. Well, the, the word the yeah. word was the word was traitor in the paper this morning, and uh, they put a list of some of the forty seven senators that came out against what Obama's trying to do, basically on himself and John Kerry. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, Kiltman, I'm starting to wonder if any of these people have ever read the Constitution and adhere to what it says. Uh, the president shall have power by and with the advice and the consent of the Senate to make treaties. That means they've got to be told what's going on. Well, exactly right. You know, but to call those guys uh, traitors, I mean, how many things has uh, our esteemed president and his uh, staff done that are treasonous? Well, and, and the question is uh, a hard one to answer because we really don't know the magnitude of what this man has done behind the scenes. Uh, we hear what he's doing with the stroke of a pen and his telephone regarding the Second Amendment and also our First Amendment rights. But now, to make a deal with one of the world's biggest thugs, and that's Iran, if not the biggest thug, and not let the American people know what's going on, on, not let the Congress know what's going on. He's not a king, and he's acting like he has to have everything his own way, and that's not the way our government is set up. That's exactly right. He's done this over and over and over again. I mean, you look at it. You go back five presidents, six presidents ago, they'd have been impeached in a heartbeat in their first term doing what he's done. And what are they doing? They let him into the second term. And he's gotten even worse, and still nobody has done a stinking thing. So they either are in his pockets or they're afraid of him. I agree. One or the other. It's, you know, and I'm thinking they're more cowards than anything else. Well, you know, this is the first time in a long time that on this program I've given praise for what the Senate and or the House has ever done. Uh, I've been very highly critical, as you know, against the Republicans and the GOP Congress because they basically kowtowed to Obama. And this is one issue where I have to salute them and say, boy, that's good. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. I think they should have done it. I should think they should have done it a long time ago. But the thing is, they've got to they've got to straighten their own house out first before they can start telling us what to do. Amen. And as of, as of right now, they haven't done any of it. So you know, this is kudos to them. But 
There's a long way to go. Amen. Uh, Kilt Man, thank you very much. God bless you, man. i got to get a hard break in at the bottom of the hour. Thank you. Okay. And uh, caller number two that's waiting there, don't go away. We'll just be a minute. I've got to tell everybody that Mount Harrison Audiology is going to bring us the Capital Press Ag Minute. Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology. I've got to call her today and schedule that hearing screening so I can tell you more about what you can expect. Yes, hearing loss is not a part of aging, and it's not an age problem, and it's not normal. So try to get over there and talk to her and have a hearing screening test. All you have to do is call 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room, 312-0957. And right now, here is the Capital Press Ag Minute. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capital Press, the West Ag Weekly. Bird flu has ebbed in the West over the past several weeks, but the same highly pathogenic virus that debuted in the U.S. in mid-December in Washington has struck commercial turkey farms in Minnesota and Missouri. The H5N2 virus, a mix of the Eurasian and North American strains, struck a turkey flock in southwest Missouri, officials said Monday. Last week, the virus infected a turkey barn in western Minnesota. The cases are the first to occur in the Mississippi Flyway, a migration route that follows the Mississippi River and, like the Pacific Flyway, originates in Alaska. Between December 1st and mid-February, bird flu infected commercial poultry farms in California and British Columbia, Canada, game bird farms in Washington, and backyard flocks in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West's Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and Capital Press. Uh, thank you very much, and our appreciation goes out to Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Did you hear that? Well, you give her a call at 312-0957. Good morning, caller. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Well, good morning. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you know, I can't ever remember an administration that's acting like a bunch of anarchists. I, I really can't. This guy's a total dictator. He's acting like a spoiled brat. If he can't get his way, everything is no. He's going to veto it. He's the biggest destructive force I, I, I can ever remember. Well, you know, here we go uh, with uh, making deals behind the scenes and under the table and behind the couch and in the closet with Iran. And uh, I don't trust any Iranian over there that's in the leadership position any farther than I could throw a Volkswagen. And... Uh, to have the news media come out, whether it's the Associated Press or whether it's NBC or whatever, it doesn't make any difference, Tony, come out and come up with headlines that say GOP tries to undercut nuclear deal with warning to Iran, they're not doing anything they shouldn't be doing because the, our Senate needs to be aware of what's happening with this president. He is not a king. Well, I, you're not going to get Iran to do anything because they're over there and we're over here and they're being backed by the Soviet Union just like the Soviet Union backed the North Koreans during the Korean War and the Vietnamese during the Vietnam War. You know, so as long as we got a guy like uh, Barack Obama, we're being blindsided. You know, if Obama does something like this and makes an agreement with Iran, the day, now I'm, I'm making an assumption here because I'm not exactly sure of all the legalese on this, but I believe the day that he would leave office as president, it would null and void any agreement that he has. But I still think that legally he has to go through the proper channels and inform the Senate and I believe have a two-thirds of the senators present, they have to concur and agree with any treaty. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, this guy can't make all the treaties that he wants. to try to go through Congress and Senate. Uh, other people besides him. Right. He's a dictator. Well, he's. Uh, there's other words that are coming to mind with this president. Yeah, well, I didn't want to bring him up. Out. Yeah. yeah, I just assume you didn't. Thank you very much, Tony. You made me nervous. <laughs> all right, thank you, Zach. Have a good day, my friend. I appreciate it. Calls welcome, 436 
587-5587. Uh, caller, I'll be right there. Thank you, Gina. And uh, Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service at 336 South 450 West of Paul. The number to call for the pruning of your trees, 431-8733. Now, when it comes to pruning trees properly, I love popping those peas, uh, fruit trees, ornamental trees, shade trees, and if you've got large, dangerous trees that are about ready to tip over into your shed or your house, better get it taken care of, and they can get the stumps out of the ground and everything else, hey, call Scott Gano. Landscaping and Sprinkler Service, and the number 431-8733. 35 years in the tree and landscape business serving you. Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Zed. Well, it's, it's, it's really sad that we've got a great constitution, but our politicians just seem to cow down to the uh, executive orders and then pass funding to implement them. You know, that, that's what's really sad about mm-hmm. the whole thing. But here we are working with a dictator over there. I mean, people that want to kill us. And uh, we're fooling around with this situation. And Article 1, Section 1 says that all laws are to be made by Congress. And yet our president just willy-nilly does whatever he wants to, and the Congress just seems to fund it like the executive amnesty. Yeah, and then it, it, there's more than one issue in the Constitution, Adrian, that addresses what's happening right now. Article 2, Section 2 also addresses this issue of curbing and reigning in the president so that he can't act like an omnipotent power's king. Well, absolutely, and yet, you know, Congress just kind of sits back and, and uh, like I say, bowed down, you know, and they, they talk a good fight. We're going to fight to amnesty tooth and toenail, and then they, they fund it not once but twice. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's just unbelievable that 75 Republicans went along with the Democrats to fund this executive amnesty. And, of course, treaties, you know, the going feeling is that, you know, Treaties supersede our Constitution. That's, there's nothing more false. Of, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Can you imagine making a treaty and, and uh, bypassing the Constitution or having more authority over? You know, absolutely th- th- not. There was something it's interesting. Not. There was something interesting said the other day, and I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember exactly the verbiage. But uh, there was a commentator on television, and he said, "You know, this is this is absolutely unbelievable that everybody in the world." basically will be told what this treaty is and what this treaty will do or not do, but the Senate of the United States of America will be the last to find out, and and it's completely tipped upside down and backwards as to what's happening with this president. He's doing everything he can to go around the legalese of our Constitution. Well, absolutely, and and that, I mean... He's absolutely said that between a cell phone and a pen, yep. you know, uh, he's just, uh, you know, he is a dictator. I mean, in the sense in Congress just lets him, well, it wouldn't be so bad, and then they turn around and do the funding for it. I know. This, this makes it even worse. So they're complicit in it. And Representative Simpson, you know, was one of those 75 that voted for this amnesty, going to bring in 5 million new Democrats plus all of these illegals are going to work cheap, and we've got people now that can't find jobs, and then we're bringing in all these high-tech people under the visa programs, and Congress uh, appropriates money for that. I mean, this is unbelievable. Well, I can go one more, and then I've got to take a break. Chew on this one for a while. It just came out this morning that, uh, i got to find the exact number here, of 6.5 million dead Americans that have died in the last 40 years. Oh, gee, Adrian, now they've been reincarnated because illegal aliens somehow have obtained their Social Security numbers. 
<laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh, it you is. Know, it is. Yeah, and even our president has an illegal Social Security number from Connecticut. Yeah. You know, from a person, that, a dead person. So, I mean, you know, join the crowd, I guess. <laughs> okay, Adrian, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. God bless. Oh, my, we've got problems. But this president and uh, the Senate, I'm glad to see this coming up. And I'm glad that they had their pictures put on the paper this morning in New York City. And I'm glad that the liberal left came out and called them names because now everybody's going to have egg on their face because these senators are doing the right thing. Hey, U.S. Auction is going to have a great big Magic Valley auction tomorrow, Wednesday, March 11th, located at 480 West, 100 South of Paul, Idaho. And don't miss it. Watch for the big U.S. auction signs. Lunch by Montana Steakhouse. And auction time is 930 tomorrow morning. They're going to have tractors. They're going to have all kinds of miscellaneous equipment. They're going to have hay equipment, grain equipment, beet and potato equipment, ground working equipment. This is is a sale you do not want to miss. And it's managed by our friends at U.S. Auction Service, the best in the West. And don't forget, it's going to be tomorrow, Wednesday, March 11th, starting time at 9.30, lunch by Montana Steakhouse, located 480 West, 100 South of Paul, Idaho. U.S. Auction, tomorrow. Don't miss it. Um, let's see, we got that taken care of this morning. Um... Oh, 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 I've got to get the weather here in just a few minutes. But before we do that, I also want to tell you what's going on at uh, next week on Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Idaho Department of Labor right there in Burley on 127 West 5th Street North. Uh, Dot Foods is looking for some really, really good people. They're, they're looking for full-time drivers, part-time drivers, team drivers, transfer drivers, and they're also... Uh, uh, really looking for warehouse people, full-time and part-time. So please go online, www.foods.com slash careers. And uh, don't forget, for more information, call Dot Foods, 678-6063, press 2. And that's, of course, for the Human Resources Department. Or stop over to the Idaho Department of Labor next Thursday, March 19th, from 4 to 6 p.m. for their job fair. Absolutely, there are jobs that there are good paying jobs, you just check it out, okay? Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Uh, now this story about uh, the VA. This is a disgusting story about a lady by the name, i got to get her name here real quick, not that it's anything of major importance, I think uh, she ought to be embarrassed enough, she is the, e, the VA spokesperson and administrator back in Indianapolis, Indiana. Robin Paul is her name, and I don't know if you saw the story, but at Christmas time, and please, veterans, I'm just repeating a story that came across the wires this morning and was on the national news. Many of the veterans that have come home from the Middle East, Iraq, Afghanistan, etc., with mental problems, she made little elves and made fun of the veterans. And this is absolutely despicable. She had one elf hanging himself on her desk. And the title underneath it was Caught in the Act of Suicidal Behavior. And this woman is a VA administrator? This is absolutely inexcusable. And she's been put on paid leave right now. She should have been fired outright. She receives an annual salary of $79,916, rounded off at eighty grand a year. And she received a 2000 performance bonus in 2013. And at Christmas time, made little elves, etc., as decorations of some of our veterans with mental health problems committing suicide? I mean, how low do you go?
And I personally, after this program is over, I'm going to try to call back there. And for what it's worth, I'm going to ask and demand why this woman is still working and why she is not out, fired, adios amigo, from her position with the Veterans Administration. This is absolutely sick. And she's the one that really needs some mental help. Calls are welcome, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Let's take a look at the weather right now. And the weather is being brought to you this hour by Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls with our good friend Ryan Horsley. And I want to just stress the fact that they have been located in Old Town, historic Old Town, Twin Falls, since 1936. And boy are they good. They've got the best of people to help you with all the guns and the ammo and the accessories and all you have to do is just stop in and talk to them today. Red's Trading Post absolutely the best at 203 5th Avenue South in Twin Falls and now here's Michael Rogers Weather. Hello everyone, Michael Rogers is up at the ranch. Okay, if you got a camera and you want to do this right and uh, yeah, I think you, you should get ready. You want to catch the sunrise this morning? Now the sun's going to come up right between the twin right between the twin towers. Okay, between Mount uh, Catch Peak and Mount Harrison. Set your camera, put it on ISO 100 aperture. I put it on F11 because you want it dark so you can catch the orange glow around that. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm a weather guy and I'm sick and tired of sounding like a weather guy. I need to talk about something else to tell you it's going to be a nice day. I've been doing it for 30 years. The radio pros hate it. I've been doing it that way. So far it works. Uh, the good news also is going to get up to about 70 degrees. How about that in this March? 41 for the overnight low. Enjoy the weather. It's going to weather you got. Thank you, Michael. Brought to you by Red's Trading Post, 203 Fifth Avenue South in Twin Falls. And the number to call, 733-3546. Ryan Horsley, the manager, and his great people at Red's Trading Post. Really nice folks. Well, good morning. How are you? Yeah, but I didn't know if you spoke about this or not. The, the six million plus social security numbers. I just talked about it a few moments ago. Okay, sorry. I'm no, no, don't apologize. What isn't that warm and comforting that illegal aliens somehow? Gee, Randy, they just fell down from heaven, or they were in a treasure trove box buried on an oasis. They happened to stumble onto these numbers of dead people, and now they have a social security number to which they're drawing benefits. Isn't that amazing? Well, what's so amazing is that you know that the government is complicit. They're involved, enabling, and and across this country, this administration continues to enable the people that are tearing this country apart and attacking the people that save it. And uh, as you drive down the freeway, and I've been very busy, extremely busy, and I'm just haven't even been able to do much of anything but work, which is good. Thank God. And I say to myself, okay, Obama administration and all you controlling, you're regulating, taxing, you know what, you say, uh, you know, they think they're going to squeeze us down. And I, I said, the American spirit, they just say, no, you're not going to do this to us. Uh, we'll figure out a way. We'll just work harder. We'll do this better. The American spirit is, is literally, I think that when we were challenged by this administration, there are so many people across this nation that have just came out with very smart plans, but they're swinging to boot. And they said, uh, you know, they just don't even care what they do. We're just going to keep going. You just can't slow us down, and I, I think we're probably, probably better than we were in 2008. You know, the thing is, though, uh, and I have been very critical of the Republicans in the midterm elections, and I think you have called on numerous occasions and also chastised the Republicans for not doing anything. And here's a situation where I think we should be fair and we should be dutiful to make sure that we acknowledge that 47 Republican GOP senators 
got together and signed a letter that said, no, the president is not going to do this without letting us know. He's not going to do this without going through the proper channels. And I have to give them credit, Randy. Finally, they're starting to stand up and show some backbone. Well, this, these senators, like Ben Sass, Cotton from Arkansas, Sass from Nebraska, and uh, the, the one from um, Colorado, these people are the, in, the, in, in the, you know, in the kind of like clues. And then you see, we're getting more of them. And you see, uh, last night, I, you know, I always have to go over to MSNBC to listen to that unbelievable crap that comes out of their mouth. And, uh, you know, Howard Dean was talking about respecting the president and respecting the office of the president. Well, when George Bush was president, they couldn't have respected it less. And, and of course, what's new with these hypocritical, you know what? Well, let me let me just preface a little bit about this letter, and I want to I want to emphasize that it was done, I think, in the proper vein. The letter was written by freshman Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas, who opposes negotiations with Iran, and it's addressed to the leaders of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and presents itself as a constitutional primer to the government of an American adversary, and it was signed by. Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky and many, many others of the Senate, also including some that are of presidential hopefuls. Uh, I think it was a good thing for the Senate to finally stand up and say, Obama, no, you're going to do it the right way. Well, this is the thing. There is signs of hope there. And Tom, uh, I think his name is Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas, like you said, he had, uh, he was uh, at a hearing and he asked uh, Homeland Security Chief, I think, or whatever, and he brought up the fact that he says, as far as I'm concerned, the prisoner can get milk and rot in hell, and he received some plaques from, of course, from MSNBC, but you see, the truth of the matter is, is they are our enemies. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, they can rot in hell, too. All right. Well, Randy, I appreciate you calling, and uh, thank you very much. But we should salute these guys this morning. They deserve yeah, our yeah. applause. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I want to get one other little story in. I'm running a little bit late on time. But I want to get one other little story in uh, about uh, Barack Obama. And uh, if I get a chance to jab the Democrats, you know, I, <laughs> I really like to. The other day, he was sitting there being interviewed. And, you know, this president really shows ignorance and a lack of, um, oh, involvement, I might say. You know, how many presidents should say, well, I learned about this the same time everybody else did in the news media. What? The President of the United States is supposed to be the most informed, the most knowledgeable person on the face of the earth because of all the professional people that come in daily during various times of the day for updates on what's going on on the various briefings of problems around the world and also right here in our country. And so when Obama said that he didn't know about Hillary Clinton using a non-government email address when she was Secretary of State, and that he learned about it the same time we did, it is a lie. It's a lie. I'm just going to call it that way. And then, to cover the lie, White House spokesman Josh Earnest suggested yesterday that, uh, oh well, the President misspoke. He misspoke. He didn't misspoke or misspeak. He looked right at the camera and said, well, I didn't know anything about it. I, I found out the same time that the American public did. That's not true. That's not true at all. And they're trying to cover their tracks about what Hillary did. And, you know, last night, listening to some of these people on the various talk shows and the various networks come out, and the liberal left, naturally, the loons on the left, the dim dims, uh, trying to cover it up and say, well, there's nothing to this. It's a waste of time. My goodness sakes. I think there's a lot to it. I think there is a lot about Benghazi. 
I think there's a lot about what happened. I think there's a lot of why there was no help available for those Americans fighting on that rooftop. I think this whole thing could be very explosive against Hillary Clinton and a possible run and or nomination for the presidency. We will wait and hopefully we will see. Don't forget, great big tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And I'm talking a big, big spring tire sale. Mm-mm. How about the Ultra Z900 all-season design? You better believe it. This is a super, super good passenger car tire. And up to 80,000-mile warranty. Ooh, boy, that dude will go down the freeway. And also, for the pickups and SUVs, the Open Country AT2, outstanding traction, long-lasting tread. Oh, my. They've got the best tire value promise in the industry and very convenient credit for tires and services at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Don't forget Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. Great big spring tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Now, I want to reiterate that next hour we are going to have Mr. John Casey. And uh, this man, I'm trying to remember, was he in the uh, Bush administration? I think he was years ago. I, I've got to do some research on that. And uh, he has written a book called Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. He absolutely does not agree at all on global warming. And uh, we've had him on the program once before about six, eight months ago. And I'm really looking forward to this morning's conversation. That'll be coming up at 9.06. And then, following that, and it worked out really well for us this morning, we're going to have Dan Kish come on the program. And Dan's been on many, many times. And we're going to be talking about how absolutely out of the ordinary expensive wind power is and how it's not paying the bills, it's not generating the electricity, and it's costing you and me a ton of money. And then at 10.06 this morning, Dr. History will be alive and direct right here in the studio. And then at 10.30, one that you don't want to miss, Andrew Bostrom talking about Iran and the final solution, what they want to do to Israel and eventually to us. So don't miss a minute of it. we got a lot coming up for the rest of the morning on Zeb at the Ranch. Right now we'll send it back over to Gina and the crew, and we'll be back in six minutes. <laughs> Welcome back. Here we go, Zeb at the Ranch. Second hour on a Tuesday, March the 10th. Our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho. Keywords always at your disposal. They're there when you need them. They're getting rid of your garbage. 734-6969, the number to call for all the dumpsters in various sizes. They've even got all the porta potties and especially to get on the route service and have them come pick up your garbage. It's gone. It's out of there. All you have to do is just give them a jingle. 734-6969, locally owned and operated, Western Waste Services. Yep always at your disposal. Nice, nice people. Uh, real quick, too, before we get our guest on the line, I want to remind everybody about our dear friends over at Hanson Mortuary and, of course, the manager and the staff always serving you and treating your family with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity, and that's Joel Hewitt and his staff. Very flexible hours to help you uh, traveling to rural towns and churches and helping you with all the arrangements when there's the passing of a loved one, remember this number, 436-5636. Handsome Mortuary, 710 6th Street in 
Rupert. Right now, I'm going to go to the phone line because I'm very honored to have this gentleman come back on our program. He was here, oh, about three, four months ago, and I wanted to talk to him again today because it seems like the Obama administration has put global warming and or climate change as more of a danger than ISIS and the Islamic rebellion going on against us, the infidels. Mr. John Casey, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Good to be back. It is my privilege and pleasure to have you on the show this morning, John. And uh, I want to talk to you about your book, Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. Uh, John, why is it that this Obama administration is absolutely bent? They've got their chin stuck out, and they're going to face into the wind, and they're going to say something as, uh, I think, blasphemous, as uh, climate change is more dangerous than ISIS. Why are they saying that? Well, this is the last opportunity the socialist uh, and democratic uh, forces teamed with the environmental groups have to force a new socialist agenda to tax and legislate us based on the greenhouse gas theory. This window of opportunity is about to close solid on them uh, because of the new coal climate and the prospect for a change in leadership in the White House. So they're trying to squeeze as much out of the remaining term of the president as they can before, again, this window of opportunity closes permanently. John, when you wrote the book, Dark Winter, um, what were you trying to tell the audience that reads the book? What's the main theme that you're trying to get across to people when they close the back cover? The main theme is that the sun really controls the climate, and based on a 206-year cycle of the sun that ended global warming and is now bringing a new, potentially dangerous, cold climate, everyone needs to get informed and get prepared for what's coming, a new cold era. Now, when I look at our situation here in the Northwest, John, and we live in a very, very vital, uh, what we call the Magic Valley, it's a very strong agricultural area, potatoes and beans and sugar beets and corn, high density of dairies, etc., and uh, changes of going into a winter, a uh, much colder climate, it could have severe damage on the crops that people need all around the United States, and for that matter, the globe. Absolutely, Zeb. And this is really the main threat that this once every 206-year cycle of the sun brings. It, it brings such devastating cold that there's massive crop losses worldwide. And you're absolutely right. The uh, good folks in Idaho, Idaho that grow so much of the food we eat is certainly going to be affected like uh, the rest of the crop-growing regions of the U.S. The message is not good, but the message is also one of, we know this is coming, let's go ahead and prepare for it. John, if you understand this, and I can remember, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was back in the mid-70s, Time Magazine had a cover on their uh, magazine that uh, basically showed the return of another ice age. Why? Why are the liberal loons and the Democrats and the Obama administration, I'm beginning to think it's all political for control and the end of capitalism. Would you agree that maybe this is all a political motivation? scheme on climate change? Well, it certainly appears to be. If you read the latest uh, books on the market, if you follow the start of the global warming movement and what the leaders of that movement actually said they were going to use the greenhouse gas and CO2 theory to do, you have to say you're absolutely right. Uh, this was never really about the science. It was always about achieving a political agenda redistribution of wealth, etc. And back to your point about the mid-70s, we've had six or seven now major media slash climate swings in the last hundred years, and every time the media goes to a group of scientists to get an explanation, and they have been historically wrong because of the forest for the trees phenomena. If you look at only a small 15 or 20 year stretch of time and try to figure out why that cold or warm period uh, is happening, you miss the message 
Uh, and certainly on a cycle that's 206 years long, those uh, flip-flops every decade or decade and a half uh, are always hidden in the noise level. So that's really what's been happening all along. They simply did not understand how climate changes and what the cause was. John, let me ask you this, and, I, and I'm very naive about certain aspects of this issue, but I, I'll try to present this question with some kind of educated uh, verbiage. Uh, what about cloud seeding, and what about the tinkering of science uh, in a possible attempt to global cool? Could they be so disruptive that once they've swung the pendulum the wrong way, we could see devastating effects like we were talking a moment ago on agriculture? areas and also uh, the habitation of certain parts of our world where people would be forced to move because of a much colder climate? Well, I am certainly very concerned about geoengineering, what you just described, especially since the U.S. has issued a formal report on this. The U.N. has now added it to their uh, every few years global climate report. So the movement is really proceeding rapidly, too rapidly, I'm afraid. We now have the same cast of characters that brought us the myth of man-made global warming, now bringing us the myth that mankind can actually change the planet's climate by manipulating it. And that's very dangerous, and we should be uh, very suspect of what would come from it. John, you know so much about this, and I, I just have got to go get a copy of your book. As a matter of fact, I'm going in tomorrow to a Barnes & Noble trying to get a copy. Uh, but what about the electrical system and grid in this country? I am absolutely adamantly opposed to wind and solar power. I call the wind turbines cancers on the landscape. They're never going to be cost efficient. And it seems like this government, particularly with this Obama administration, is doing everything they can to ruin the scope of an increasing electrical grid. Talk about that just for a few moments. Well, I'm very concerned, as, as everyone should be, about the electrical grid. Uh, there is, to my knowledge, and I've contacted many of the major utilities, there is no one, absolutely no one, that I can find that is preparing future energy requirements based on this new, potentially devastating cold climate that has already begun. And uh, furthermore, uh, this increased uh, taxing of Americans to produce very expensive wind and solar plants is simply going to be wholly inadequate to address our needs in the future. For example, the International Energy Association has said globally only about 0.8% of global power is now generated by renewables. At best case, that will only uh, reach 2.2% by the year 2040. That is wholly inadequate to make a dent in the energy needs we will need and certainly does not warrant the expenditure of the funds we're putting into it at this point. Let me ask you this. Are we so far along in this Al Gore type thinking and now being adopted and really uh, pushed by the Obama administration and also the United Nations? Are we at, a, at the edge of the cliff and our heels are over the edge and somebody's just going to teeter us off? Or is there some hope that with a change of administrations in this country, we can turn things around? Unfortunately, Zeb, I don't see a lot of hope at this point. The Republican Party has steadfastly refused to acknowledge the danger of the new cold climate. Uh, they have been uh, meager at best in fighting off the flawed, bad science of man-made global warming. And given the time that we have left, I don't see that there's going to be any national movement to go ahead and get this country prepared in the way that it needs to be. Bear in mind that preparing a country for a devastating new cold era should take decades, mm -hmm. and we don't have decades left. We've squandered the last, will have squandered eight years of the Obama administration, and, and now we may not have much time left. We came very close in 2013, for example, to having our first major crop damage. And with the growing brutal winters that we see in this new cold climate trend, uh, unfortunately, I think we're just going to have to 
uh, get down to the individual level. Every citizen needs to be informed. Every citizen needs to be prepared on their own. We should not expect our government to react in time to help us. John, i got to ask you this. Uh, you have been a naysayer against climate change and or slash global warming. What have they, the other side, the Al Gores, et cetera, what have they tried to do to you or how have they tried to belittle you and your book? Well, that's, that's been ongoing for eight years, Eb. Uh, I will uh, relate a small story. Uh, I had just finished a classified project for the White House back in 06 was wrapping up consulting for uh, a construction company and two high-tech companies and was planning my retirement when I discovered these cycles of the sun that were driving climate and bringing the new cold era. As soon as I published my peer-reviewed research paper and opened up the website, uh, despite having been a White House advisor on space programs, a shuttle engineer, a consultant to NASA, immediately I was labeled a scam artist, a hoax, and a fraud. Mm. That shows you the vicious, venomous nature of the Democratic Party and the socialist agenda led by UN climate scientists and, and how they will spare no means whatsoever to... Uh, defame, denigrate, or effectively shoot the messenger, not just me, but any scientist that steps up now and says that this man-made global warming is basically bad science, at best fraudulent, uh, in total, at worst. John, I've got to ask you this. When you talk to these people uh, that are on the left and advocates of global warming and climate change, what do they want? I know that sounds like a simplistic question, but what levels do they want? What levels of CO2? What uh, temperatures do they want to drop down to? I mean, have they got a program? Have they spelled it out? What they want and what they expect to get? No question about it. The goals and the guidelines are fairly well defined. Certainly they want to pre prevent what they have predicted to be a two degree centigrade temperature rise globally by the year 2100. Under that kind of preposterous scenario, uh, sea levels would rise, flood major coastlines and major cities, and there would be droughts and so forth. Uh, these are the scare tactics that have been used against us since this program began. Uh, what they uh, have claimed is that they want to impose uh, significant restrictions on energy production and energy use by citizens around the planet uh, in order to achieve a shutdown of CO2 and a guarantee that the two degrees centigrade rise will not happen. For example, the detailed plans that exist at the UN indicate that all Europeans per capita must cut energy use by 50% by the year 2050, and that here in the U.S., all Americans must cut their energy consumption by 75% by the year 2050. This effectively will destroy the global economy and in the U.S. send us back to the caveman days very quickly to achieve those kinds of goals. It's certainly ludicrous. It's certainly Orwellian in scope and severity. And this is the kind of lunacy that exists at the United Nations. These global socialists have clearly taken this uh, minor trace gas called CO2, which is extremely beneficial to plant life, and have said they want to not only eliminate industrial production of CO2, but they want to reduce CO2 back down to the 260 or 280 parts per million. Uh, when you get down below that level, then you're starting to affect plant growth, crop growth, etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, these folks, unfortunately, uh, look like they've been taking LSD for a long time now because truly they're living in a delusional world. And John, really, I think you'd agree with me after that last very explanatory uh, uh, remarks that you made. The whole thing boils down to a seven-letter word, the way it sounds. It sounds like the elitists want just control, C-O-N-T-R-O-L. They just want control of the world's populace. Isn't that really what they're shooting for? 
no question about it, Zeb. And again, you just have to go back and listen to their comments uh, all throughout the years. They've made uh, brazen statements uh, such that uh, the CO2, the greenhouse gas theory, was nothing more than redistribution of wealth, nothing more than uh, shutting down a global industry, and that comes directly from the head of the UNIPCC um, and, uh, and others like him. So this uh, is really the worst kept secret on the planet and unfortunately the current administration and the mainstream media keep up this facade that man does control the climate and we can actually impose controls by taxation and legislation of course since the sun really controls the climate we can't tax the sun or legislate the sun and now you know why they're going the route they are they can only gain control they can only gain power and money by taxing something like an industrial gas emission one would think though that uh, when we go into the possibility the very strong possibility of an ice age without the food without the uh, the progressive societies trying to make a living and boost economic conditions that even they the elitists will suffer don't they see that they also will come down in their status and also their wealth uh, I don't think so. I think they believe they are elitists, that they will be insulated by their uh, grab hold of legislative and economic power so that they won't have to feel the ill effects that the rest of the world, the common citizen, will have to. I suspect it'll be just like communism, where you have a, a group of rulers at the top who live uh, plush lives, all the food, wine, and money they want, while the rest of the, uh, the people suffer. I, I really think they have a, a serious problem in how they view the world and how they view their own self-importance. And it doesn't sound like a change in administration or a change in even parties uh, running the re administration will have a significant effect on uh, the world's push from the United Nations and others to adhere to a global warming concept. Absolutely. Uh, right now, I'm not seeing it at all. Uh, fortunately, we're finally starting to see some House and Senate committees start testimony, start hearings on this matter. But this is something that they could have done a long time ago. I really don't see the impetus. I think they will be essentially quiet uh, until the election comes around, thinking falsely once more like Senator McCain did, that they can garner environmental votes and sway the election in 2016. But uh, as we know from the McCain campaign, that never worked. That strategy doesn't work. And fundamentally, if you don't tell the truth, I think a lot of people are getting uh, turned off to you, regardless what party you're from. Absolutely. Uh, noted scientist and former NASA advisor, and I'm very honored to have him come on this program the second time. John L. Casey, the author of Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. I highly recommend everyone getting this book. And John, God's blessings to you, and thank you so much for coming back on my program. Thanks for having me back, Zip. Thank Thanks you, sir. Care. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, very, very informative, man. And by the way, uh, this book is available on Amazon and in bookstores everywhere, Dark Winter. And I'm going to get a copy of it tomorrow. And uh, I certainly urge you to do the same. Very, very uh, ex explanatory about the end of global warming, a long-term drop in Earth's temperatures, and uh, how we're moving into decades of dangerously cold weather. Very interesting. The book called Dark Winter. Okay, we got to pay some bills here real quick. And uh, I want to remind everybody about Cheney Floors and Home Design. My goodness sakes, we are blessed to have them as our weather sponsor. 
and they bring you Michael Rogers weather every morning right after we sign on and they're located at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley number to call 678-6945 all you have to do is look for the blue door and Whitney said too that uh, your entrance into a home sets the tone for the whole home utilize a cabinet with doors you can store seasonal things in extra blankets even tablecloths and she said keep it right by the front entrance and it helps you keep your entire home clean and orderly. You stop in and see them today. Nice, nice people at Cheney Flooring and Home Design 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Also, there is going to be a great big sale tomorrow, and I want to point this out to you, and it's being managed by our friends at U.S. Auction. Best in the West, it's the Magic Valley Auction, and it's going to be tomorrow, Wednesday, March 11th, and sale time is at 9.30 a.m., located 480 West, 100 South of Paul, Idaho, and they'll have lunch by the Montana Steakhouse. Ho, ho, they're going to have a good sale. All kinds of tractors and construction equipment and pickups and trailers and hay equipment, grain equipment, beaten potato equipment. You'd better get on to this sale tomorrow. The Magic Valley Auction, Wednesday, March 11th, and that's going to start at 9.30 a.m. Put on by the Best in the West, U.S. Auction Company. Oh, my. A lot of things cooking here today. And in just a very few minutes, we're going to have Dan Kish on the air with us. And while we're waiting, I also want to remind you, too, that when it comes to your insurance needs, don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Where are they located? Thought you'd never ask. Highway 24 in Rupert. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the number. I'm going to give you that first so you can uh, write it down and make an appointment to go in and talk about life insurance health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. They can help you with all of those different categories. Very, very accessible and devoted. Dean and Todd serving you at Cameron and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. That number again, 436-4424. Earlier this morning, I mentioned to you about the Sportsman for Fish and Wildlife, and I want to mention that one more time. My dear friend Jack Euler gave me this. Oh, my goodness. Did you hear that? <laughs> I love that. Call to the race. I forgot to turn it off, Gina. Sportsmen for Fish and Wildlife will have their 12th annual Magic Valley Chapter Rally for Wildlife Banquet and Fundraiser this coming Saturday, March 14th at the Canyon Crest Event Center in Twin Falls. The preview on all the items they're going to have for auction and everything starts at 530 and then the dinner at 645. Don't forget to get your tickets for the Sportsman for Fish and Wildlife 12th Annual Magic Valley Chapter Rally for Wildlife Banquet and Fundraiser coming up this Saturday. Going to be good. And while you're at it, don't forget all sportsmen need something to get out in the boonies with, and that's why all the ATVs and all the dirt bikes and everything else are over at Let's Ride. Oh, oh my! 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and Hayburn, where the fun is sold. Don't forget they've got all the ATVs. And now is a great time to go over and check out a brand new one for this year. Or, if you haven't had your four-wheeler serviced, you better get over there right now and then get ready to hit the hills. Along with the great service department, they've also got all the accessories, everything for you. Something for everyone at Let's Ride. Highway 24 between Rupert and Hayburn, where the fun is sold. Well, good morning, Dan Kish. How are you today? Good morning, Zeb. Nice to have you on the program, my friend. How's everything back in the land of milk and money? Oh, just as crazy as can be. We're enjoying watching everybody spend, uh, you know, here in Washington, D.C., watching them all drunk with power, spending money like drunken sailors, and uh, uh, they appear to enjoy themselves, Zeb. Unfortunately, I think it's hurting the country. Uh, Dan, you know, i got to tell you that just a few minutes ago, and I'm sure you probably know this gentleman, just a few moments ago on my other segment preceding yours, I had uh, famous scientist John L. Casey with his book called Dark Winter, and he was going into, and I believe everything he said I believe is true, we're going into a cold spell instead of the global warming that the Al Gore 
Mars had predicted. Um, and we're not going to have enough electricity because solar and wind power is not going to cut the cake. And that leads me up to what you and I were going to talk about this morning. I think wind power and solar has been a drastic waste of money. How do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's been a, I agree with you 100%, Zeb. I mean, I don't mind people putting it up. I don't have any problem with what anybody does, to be perfectly honest with you, to generate their electricity, but I don't um, want to have to pay for it, and I don't want the government ordering us to buy it the way they're doing now, and then um, paying people to do it. We don't, we don't need to produce, we don't need to pay people money to produce electricity in the United States. We've got the world's largest coal supplies. We've got we're the largest producer of natural gas. Um, we've got a huge amount of hydro. We invented nuclear. I mean, why in the world uh, would we all of a sudden try to fundamentally transform the United States so that uh, we, we tell people to produce the kind of electricity that doesn't make economic sense to produce, and that's what's going on. And let me ask you this, Dan, uh, and again, I go back to what Mr. Casey said last half hour, that we're going to need a whole bunch more electricity if we go into this cooler snap for at least a decade, and the wind is not doing the job, it's not cost effective, it's not producing the electricity we need, the solar is not doing the job. Okay, so Dan, where are we? We're a country that's like a boat stuck in the middle of the lake with no rudder. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right, Zeb. We don't, we don't need these. I mean, frankly, we, we, our, our demand for electricity in the United States is not growing that fast because our economy is in the tank. I mean, despite all this, these phony numbers that government is putting out with regard to uh, unemployment, when you peel them back, you're looking at uh, people who just gave up. You know, they stopped, so they don't count them anymore, so the unemployment rate goes down. I tell you, it's like, uh, you know, it's like the government thinks we're stupid, Zeb, just like that uh, Gruber guy said about mm -hmm. uh, health care. And they just keep putting out propaganda left and right, and it, it, it doesn't hold up uh, in terms of real economic growth and people feeling as though they're getting ahead. The only thing we're feeling like we're getting ahead a little bit on is... Uh, the price of gasoline, which of course happened despite the federal government, not because of it. So we, we um, uh, it, across the board, we've got a situation where everything the government wants us to do doesn't make any sense, and it shows because in order for them to do what they need to do, they have to pay people to do what other people would do without being paid for. Dan, you're closer to this than I am. Every day, uh, stories come across your desk and everything as to what the government wants and what they're going to try to impose on us. But when you look at uh, energy right now, and gas prices have dropped substantially, uh, diesel prices are still, I think, uh, way out of bounds. But that being said, do you see in your crystal ball maybe where this administration, before they leave office, they're going to try to impose the carbon card theory to where we all are going to be given limited access, and if we go over that, we're going to have to pay through the nose just to get to work? Yeah, I actually think they're going to try to... I think they're actually... The, what the, the trick that the president is setting up is much like what he's doing with Iran, uh, Zeb. I mean, he's off negotiating um, with the Iranians, and nobody quite knows what he's up to, and we're supposed to just uh, say thank you very much. Same thing's happening with... Uh, his negotiations with the United Nations over what Americans are going to be able, the kind of electricity we're going to be able to use, the kind of uh, cars we're going to be able to drive, the kind of energy that uh, we can or can't take from the ground. Um, and he's going to try to oppose that on us by saying that somehow there's, there's uh, some commitment by the United States, which the Senate has not confirmed. And um, that's really what's going on. We've got a rogue operation going here. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's um, never seen anything like it. Never thought I would. But it's right here. Um, alive and well in Washington, D.C. They just uh, are, are going out of their bounds to make energy uh, prices necessarily skyrocket and to transform our entire energy economy. And, and it's happening without people knowing about it that much. Uh, which is why it's good that uh, you and people like you are out there trying to spread uh, 
the word about what's going on, Seth. Let me ask you this. You know, you sound like, and I don't think I've ever asked you this, but you sound like an old farm boy. Were you born and raised in agriculture out in a rural area? Uh, pretty close to it. I, I never. I got my fingers and hands dirty a, a few other ways, Zeb, but I was real close to it, and I've always appreciated the hard work that it takes to... Uh, uh, you know, work with God to make sure that things grow from the ground. Well, see, that leads me right up to my point. I don't think that these people like the Obamas and the John Kerry's and others and people in the United Nations have any clue about the sustaining of life through a good agricultural food supply. And as we get closer and closer to what they want is a zero energy usage of fossil fuels, you tell me how you're going to push those John Deere's through the field with a big propeller. Go ahead. Well, that, that's right, Zeb. I mean, not only is agriculture the amount of food that we're able to produce dependent upon um, the forms of energy that we've got right here in abundance that the government doesn't want us to use, the fact of the matter is the yields that come from those um, are enhanced by the very things, that, that also by energy products. I mean, if you really think about it, that nitrogen fertilizer, that, that is created by an energy source, mm -hmm. and um, uh, or, or the fertilizer is mined if it happens to be phosphates or something like that, but uh, nitrogen is direct, directly taken from natural gas, and um, that's, what, that's what goes on there to expand. It adds energy to the crop, in essence. I mean, this isn't rocket science. Uh, don't, don't try to have them buffalo you with all their fancy talk. At the end of the day, basically what we're talking about is how do we get more more energy to feed people and animals, um, God's creatures here on earth, from the various sources of energy we've got. And there's only so much that comes from the, from the sun, and if you don't add additional sources of energy through fertilizer to crops, um, they're not going to grow uh, in the abundance that is necessary to feed the uh, 7 or 8 billion mouths around the world that uh, uh, we've got. I just don't understand why politicians that have been duped by this uh, global warming or climate change or wind and solar over fossil fuels and leading us down the path to destruction. I don't understand why senators and congressmen from western states and agricultural states, be it Illinois, be it Wisconsin, be it Indiana, California, Idaho, Iowa, it doesn't make any difference, why they're not standing up and representing their constituents and yelling at the top of their lungs, hey, we got to feed the world and we can't do it with solar and wind power. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question, Zeb. I think the answer is they're afraid. They're afraid because the mainstream media and all the uh, cultural elites in this country uh, who couldn't find their way out of a you know paper paper bag uh, have have been alleging that somehow if you ask questions about why things aren't working out the way they promised us they would. I mean, they were telling us the world would be warming up, warming up, warming up. Well, it, you just talked to your, your recent guest, uh, tells you that the facts of the matter are it isn't warming up. None of the things that they predicted are coming true, and yet they continue to predict the same things. And, you know, if, if, if you and I bet on the same sports team for 17 years or 18 years and, and bet the wrong way and it all lost, uh, we, you know, Folks would ask if we knew anything about sports, wouldn't they? Yeah, but they could be Cubs fans. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> There's loyalty counts for something. I guess. You know, uh, again, I just don't understand why the message can't be loud and clear that uh, these renewable energies are not working and we're in dire straits. And you would think, and I asked this of John Casey when he was on the program, you would think that the elitists would understand that if everybody is going to go broke and everybody is hungry, and everybody doesn't have the necessities of life. They won't either because the trickle-down effect is not going to create a richer atmosphere for them either. Yeah, I mean, Deb, there, there's the trick. I mean, people think they can mess around, mess around, mess around, and eventually it doesn't hurt. These things, it's the death of a thousand cuts, but at the end of the day, it's a death. Um, and... And the truth of the matter is they're playing around with, we, without modern energy sources, we couldn't feed anywhere near the number of people that we have on Earth today. Um, and if you can't feed people, 
uh, they die of starvation. And the world is not, this isn't something new to the world. We've had periods of time before when famine on a broad scale brought apart in, um, uh, 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 brought because of uh, uh, failures of uh, crops or, 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 or weather patterns or what have you uh, wreak havoc on populations in, in which it, and it's a, this is a very closely run thing. Thank God we have these sources um, and know how to use them and have put them to work for us. But the idea that you can all of a sudden start messing around with the very basic things that produce uh, the ability to, to move water, uh, to make sure that it's clean, to, um, uh, uh, to, to support a manufacturing base so people have uh, jobs, it produces the energy to move our transportation from one end of the country or the world to another, uh, that somehow you can mess around with these things nonstop and not eventually goof them up is, is, um, uh, is a real hubris that I think will come back to bite people. You know, i got to say this. Uh, as I looked at these sheets about the segment with you this morning, and Obama's budget for 2016, his proposal of $4 trillion, trillion with a T, and in that is $7.4 billion with a B for clean energy, we'd be just as well off just taking that uh, $7.4 billion and flushing it down the toilet, wouldn't we? Yeah, well, I, I tell you, Zeb, it's kind of scary. I, I'm old enough to remember a time when everybody was ooing and eyeing at the fact that the United States had a two hundred million, two hundred billion dollar budget, and we're now talking about four trillion. I don't know where the money goes. Uh, they're throwing around money in this town so much that uh, you can buy a thousand dollar steak in this town nowadays. There's a restaurant in town that sells a thousand dollar steak. Oh my! If you can believe that. Mm. Now, where do you think that money comes from? Um, that money comes from your taxpayers and everybody's uh, 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 your tax dollars and everybody who's listening's tax dollars going to pay lobbyists and uh, representatives who are all jockeying for position with the government in Washington D.C. and and um, trying to get you know their favorite thing taken care of. And, and you know, with, with nobody looking out for the best interest of the American public, and there's too much power in this town, there's too much money in this town, and there's too much uh, know-nothingness in this town, to be perfectly honest with you, and it's just growing... Uh, like I've never seen a crow before. i got to ask you this. If we were doing this interview right now this morning, back on a Eastern radio station, huh. why, both of us would be run out of town on a rail, would we not? Uh, yeah, pretty much that. I was, I was kind of thinking about that as I was talking about that. If a lot of the people that I know in this town would uh, heard me say what I just said, uh, they probably wouldn't like it. But I, I'm not kidding you. They literally have a steak in this town. It's one of those Wagyu beef things, you know, where they massage the beef, the Japanese uh, Kobe beef sort of thing. But you can buy a $1,000 steak if you can imagine such a thing. Um, anybody who tells me that that's uh, real real uh, economics, that that makes any sense at all, or that uh, uh, anyone who would buy one has, has any kind of common sense at all, uh, it, but but it's all you know it's all funny money it's that's the kind of uh, that's what's going on while you folks are working hard out there that's the kind of nonsense that's going on back in this town last thought on this Dan of the 681 days that we're going to be left with the Obama administration uh, kind of uh, give us your feelings about fracking and about oil production in this country and about what kind of powers this man and his administration may try to assume to put us at an even lower ebb as far as what we can do and can't do for transportation in the United States. Yeah. Zeb, uh, I think he's going to be working overtime. He seems focused on global warming. It seems to animate everything in this administration at this particular point, largely because they'd like to get to a point, as you, you know, when you spend money the way they've been spending, they've got to figure out a new source for it. And the real goal here, the real, you know, the gold ring for these people in Washington, D.C., and uh, socialistic uh, uh, failing economies in Europe as well, 
has been to impose a cost on carbon, a price on carbon. Call it what you will. At the end of the day, you know, they were trying to do it through cap and tax and all of that uh, approach that they were doing that failed. But that's what they're trying to do because they need a new source of energy, of, of money, I'm sorry, uh, from the energy that we all have to use just to live. Uh, to be able to pay for all their plans and to buy votes and to do all the rest of the things that they're doing right back here in in Washington, D.C., and that's the goal. So I fear very much that they're going to be pushing on this. We'll be fighting uh, the Institute for Energy Research uh, to expose this along the way with other like-minded groups in this town um, and across the country. But uh, they really want to, you know, and nothing seems to stop him. Uh, he seems lawless. All I can say is that uh, I always look forward to having your candid remarks on my program. Dan Kish, a good friend, and thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. And if you ever get out here, you know I'm not going to buy you a thousand dollar steak, but I'm going to buy you a doggone good one. <laughs> Zeb, I thank you very kindly, and, and you got a deal, my friend, and believe me, I wouldn't eat a $1,000 steak. I don't know what I'd do with it. I, 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 I think I'd go to another restaurant. All right, my friend. Take care. God bless. Thank you so much. Th thanks, Zeb. God bless you. Thank you. A uh, gentleman that I really enjoy having on my program, Dan Kish, uh, Senior Vice President of Policy for the Institute of Energy Research, and we appreciate him very much. Um, right now, i got to pay some bills. And I've got to also get the weather forecast in here. And the weather is brought to you this hour by our friends at Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center. And they're located at 382 North Overland in Burley. Mm -hmm. Minor emergencies, major care. They will see you today. And your health is their number one priority. And they understand that being sick or hurt is not convenient. So they do the best to make your health care convenient for you at Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center with the telephone number 6786996 and right now here is Michael Rogers weather hello everyone Michael Rogers is at the ranch okay if you got a camera and you want to do this right and uh, yeah I think you, you should get you want to catch the sunrise this morning now the sun's going to come up right between the twin right between the twin towers okay between Mount uh, Catch Peak and Mount Harrison. Set your camera, put it on ISO 100, aperture. I put it on F11, because you want it dark, so you can catch the orange glow around that. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm a weather guy, and I'm sick and tired of sounding like a weather guy. I need to talk about something else to tell you it's gonna be a nice day. I've been doing it for 30 years. The radio pros hate it. I've been doing it that way. So far, it works. Uh, the good news also is going to get up to about 70 degrees. How about that in this March? 41 for the overnight low. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. All right, Michael. Thank you very much. And, of course, brought to you by Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center. And they're located at 382 North Overland in Burley. Telephone number 678-6996. Minor emergency, major care. Oh, man, I'm running a little bit late here this morning. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. We've still got some time for some of your calls. And while I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in... I want to remind you again about Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley, and my friend Tim Vaughn. Now, call Tim today for estimates on jobs that you need built. That's it, plain and simple. Streamline Precision gets the job built for you. Construction, excavation, and fabrication. Number to call for estimates, 431-7314. I'll say it again, 431-7314. Now, they're a construction company that specializes in large-scale industrial projects, experts in constructing agricultural buildings, grain silos, and commercial steel buildings. And I talked to Tim the other day, and he said, man, this time of the season, a lot of people want trenching for pipelines and a lot of cement and concrete work for mangers and feed alleys. Well, they'll get the job done for you, and they're currently also building the new Funk Dairy right here in the Murtaugh area. Streamline Precision. 120 South, 100 West of Burley. You call Tim for estimates today. 431-7314.
All right, give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. A story that I didn't get on last hour, and it just, it grated me and made me really upset this morning. In Lancaster, Pennsylvania, they have a team called the Redskins, the land, a high school team, Lancaster Redskins. Well, there was a meeting last night, and here we go with another political correctness. They've had that name, the Lancaster Redskins, for decades and decades and decades. And now, a small little bitty group of do-gooders and PCers, they said, you got to change the name. You can't be the Lancaster Redskins anymore. Why not? Well... It offends us. This little group of people, they said, it offends us. Well, who are you? Well, uh, we are representing some of the other schools in your conference, and we are telling those other schools that um, we're going to cause all kinds of trouble with those other schools if they play you next year in any sport, if you don't change your name blackmail now they had a meeting last night and what really was interesting is all these supposed people from the other schools got together and they said well we've been kind of told that you've got to change your name from the Lancaster Redskins or we're going to be bombarded with political correct people coming in and saying we shouldn't play in it's just going to be all kinds of a mess and so we're demanding that you change your name on your team. Well, it was really interesting last night. One lady stood up, and of many, I should say, people that voiced their opposition to any name change. And she looked at the people up at the head table, and she looked at the representatives from the other schools, and she said, you know what? All of you offend me. And she pointed at one or two individuals in person and she said, and your last name offends me. So you change your last name. And she's right. She's absolutely right. Because where do you draw the line? How are you going to stop somebody from someplace, sometime, sticking their big nose into anybody's business and saying, well, you know what? I don't like the name of your business. I think you should change it. It's offensive. Yeah, well, you've got to draw the line someplace. And I really respect the players, the coaches, the parents of Lancaster saying, no. No, if that's the case and we're going to be ostracized, for a name that we have had out of respect for decades and decades, fine. You don't play us. We won't play then. We're not going to be bullied into changing our name. I think that is the best way to handle these people. Stick your nose out and your chin out and tell them no. We're going to leave it the way it is. Where are you going to draw the line in our society today when someone, somewhere, is not going to be offended? Calls are welcome, 436-2244. Mad River Laser at 502 E Street in Rupert. Hello, Nicole and Alex Pratt. These are wonderful people. And, oh, man, I'll tell you what, they can make anything. I'm having a new clothing line uh, kind of fixed together over there with Nicole, and it's going to be outstanding. And right now, too, she's got the buck knives. I love buck knives. I love to collect knives. And uh, she will do engraving free, and these buck knives are on sale now for 10% off. And by the way, business promotion items, oh, ho, ho, she can put your logo or business name on anything. Absolutely. And for the grandparents, they have gifts for all the children. You know, they got those little stuffed animals that come to life on the computer screen. Oh, they've got also employee recognition, employee of the month plaques, 25% off this month. Great way to tell your employees, we appreciate you. Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert. Number to call, 436-2293. Really nice people. All right, um, coming up this next hour, 
I, I think he just walked in the door. Yes, he did in all of his greatness and his uh, regal attitude. We have Dr. History that just walked in the door, and he's going to be with us this next half hour for, of course, the Dr. History segment. And then at 10.30, don't forget, we're going to have author of the book called Iran's Final Solution for Israel. Very, very dangerous about Iran and what they're trying to do. Andrew Bostom is going to be on the program at 10.30. All of this coming up with more on Zeb at the Ranch. And um, we'll look forward to it. Good morning, Dr. History. How are you? He's got his glasses on and he's all ready to give us a great big historical review this next hour. We'll be back in six. Don't go away. my hour number three it is a fantastic looking day outside and we're going to have dr history with us in just a few moments stay tuned for that don't forget the chadwick sports grill at 139 west main in burley on tuesday today they've got croquet monsieur Hmm. That's French ham and cheese sandwich served hot with cream sauce. Oh, does that sound good and melted cheese? Oh, croquet, monsieur. I love it. I just like saying it. French ham and cheese sandwich. Today at the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. And go in and show them that you got a lot of class and culture and say, I want the croquet, monsieur, at the Chadwick. Make sure you do it at the Chadwick. Any other place, they might throw you out. <laughs> anyway, be sure and stop over and say hello. Chadwick Sports Grill, always great food serving you. And uh, while we have a, just a second quick, I also got to tell you about the uh, next Thursday, the 19th, 4 to 6 p.m., the Idaho Department of Labor is going to have a great big job fair, and that's at 127 West 5th Street North in Burley. Say that fast five times. Dot Foods is now hiring for multiple positions, drivers, full-time partners, part-time team drivers, transfer drivers, and warehouse people, full-time and part-time. And boy, do they treat their people well. Let me tell you, they're growing and they're hiring Dot Foods in Burley. Absolutely. They've seen a 12% increase in volume over last year. Don't forget that great big job fair next Thursday the 19th from 4 to 6 at the Idaho Department of Labor in Burley. Really good folks and a lot of job opportunities. Right now, it's time for Dr. Dr. History, and of course, Dr. History, better known when he changes his clothes in a phone booth as Dr. Ken Turner, and it's brought to everybody by Minicash's Sales at 1321 East Main in Burley, with Zach and Joanne and the whole crew with windows and garage doors and back doors and front doors and vinyl and metal siding, and also all the tartar and ranch and farm equipment. They've got the very best at Minicash's Sales. We'll tell you more in a minute, but right now, good morning, Dr history. Good morning, Zeb. I'm out of air. Great morning, sunshine. Oh, you had a chance to drive up here and just inhale and exhale. I bet it's fantastic. Uh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Better than a week ago in that snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what do you got for us today? Well, I'll tell you what. If you think of uh, the thieves and robbers of... Uh, the century ago, uh, what do you think might have been what one of their main targets might have been? Well, thieves and robbers from a century ago? Yeah, in oh, the 1800s. I would say stagecoaches. Okay, how about trains? Well, that was choice number two. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what we're going to talk about, okay. train robbers. All right. It kind of reached its height in the second half of the 19th century in the first decade of the 20th. Uh, the railroad express cars were prime targets because they a lot of times carried a lot of money mm -hmm. in those express cars. Yeah. So robbing the railroads provided full employment for a goodly number of robbers and hoodlums in the years after the Civil War. Full employment? Full employment. A good place. I don't know how the retirement was, but uh, the benefits might have been really good. They're not going to have one of those jobs at the job <laughs> fair. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, 1895, for example, there were at least 49 attacks on railroad express cars that actually succeeded. Wow. Now, not, that's not to mention those that flopped or failed for various reasons. But the train robbers ranged all the way from the really dangerous guys like the Dalton and the James Younger gangs to guys that 
really goofed. And I'm going to tell you a few stories about some of the guys that kind of needed to go back to school regarding train robbery. You mean to tell me they had some faux pas? They did. And, and uh, some of them ended up in not a good way. I'm, in fact, I've got a picture I'll show you. Mm. So anyway, these guys were likely to mistreat the express agents pretty badly to get into the express safes in which the really valuable loot was usually locked. Now, if the agent was true to his salt, as a lot of them were, and they holed up in the express car and made a fight for it, he ran a pretty good chance of having the car blown up and possibly himself as well. Oh, my. Now, the railroads quickly went to a system of what they called way safes and through safes, and I'm going to explain that mm -hmm. uh, in order to kind of uh, stop the robberies. So, uh, in the express, the express agent could get into the safe, the way safe, which contained comparatively small amounts of money for little towns along the way. Now, the through safe, on the other hand, uh, protected the really important money, and it was destined to go all the way through to the train's final or major destination. I see. And only there could it be opened by station personnel. The express agent on the train could not open it. So, on occasion, uh, train robbing gangs were able to blast open a through safe, but but that took real talent and something something that most outlaws didn't really have a good talent for. Oh, well, they didn't understand the scientific type thing. Yeah, uh, Butch Cassidy, for example. Yeah. But, uh, okay, there was, for example, the saga of a couple of members of the vaunted Wild Bunch who decided to stick up the Southern Pacific Line. It happened mm. at Sanderson, Texas in 1912, actually. Really? Uh, when Ben Kilpatrick and Ole Beck. Ole. Ole, I can uh, tell you stories about Ole. And I've got a picture I'll show you here in okay. a bit. But, anyway, they decided it would be a fine idea to fatten their wallets by robbing a train. Just the year before, Ben had finished 10 years in prison for tr train robbery. Uh oh so you'd think he would have learned from his long time behind bars, but maybe that kind of reinforced his uh, vocation and uh, sharpened his appetite for express cars. Anyway, at first, indeed, things went well. The express messenger, a guy named Troutsdale, showed no signs of putting up a fight, as so many of his compatriots did. So his apparent submission and that of his two helpers must have pleased these two experienced outlaws. Uh, an easy payday, no trouble, no shooting, no spilled blood, no noise, no fuss at all, just the money. Well, Troutsdale in the express car uh, was kind of agreeable. Um, uh, even with Ole Beck outside the express car, Troutsdale uh, withstood uh, this Kilpatrick's bullying, which included a, a series of painful blows from the outlaw's Winchester. And Kilpatrick said, get a move on. And uh, Troutsdale did. Mm -hmm. So the agent's action was not, however, exactly what Kilpatrick had in mind. Uh, he said, this is the most valuable partial in the car uh, in, indicating a package with his toe uh, of his shoe well intrigued the outlaw bent down to retrieve the prize not a good move at this point Troutsdale picked up an ice maul oh okay it's a heavy wooden mallet yeah. designed to crush big chunks of ice into smaller pieces yeah uh, to keep things cool, like oysters. That oh, they it cooled them all, yeah. right? Well, the mall was laying conveniently on top of a nearby barrel of oysters, and with his handy implement, uh, the express agent bashed Kilpatrick in the back of the head, oh. then hit the bandit twice more for good measure. Oh, my goodness. Well, nevertheless, uh, that put an instant end to Kilpatrick. Yeah. Well, Troutsdale prepared for further action. Uh, the den dead bandit had been armed to the teeth. A Winchester... Uh, two revolvers in his belt. So Troutsdale kept the Winchester for himself and then handed a pistol to each of his two helpers. I see. Well, wisely, the three agents waited for a while to see what else would happen. Nothing did. Mm -hmm. So, unwilling to wait for further developments, Troutsdale fired a shot through the roof of the car. Oh, my. Now, this got almost immediate results. Yeah, I would imagine. So a voice was heard, uh, a voice that called out for Frank, which was Kilpatrick, who was already dead. Yeah. Well, the messenger could not uh, be sure, but he assumed quite correctly it's turned out that the voice belonged to this Ole Beck who was up on top. Oh, he's back again. He's back. So he's down around there. He's peering around a, a pile of baggage. Trousdale saw the outline of a head, somebody lurking behind a stack of trunks and boxes. He soon had a clear view of the lurker behind the baggage. Drove a rifle bullet right, bullet right through him, creating a third eye just above the rider, re, robber's real one. Mm. Uh, thus ended the exploits of the famous 
branch of the wild bunch. So these guys weren't really the uh, the best pupils in the class. No, no, they 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 weren't real good. Can we stop right sure. here and have a good That's word while we try to regroup some of our criminals and our bad guys, sure. and maybe talk about somebody that was a little smarter than a sponge? <laughs> Stand by. Minicash Sales is the sponsor for Doctor History, and they're located at thirteen twenty one East Main in Burley. And I'll tell you what they can help you with all your spring remodeling projects and they have carpet lots and lots of carpet and they've got vinyl and metal siding and they've also got all the solid surface countertops and they carry all the supplies for their carpet layers all the small tools everything and they have as a distributor all the best of tartar farm and ranch equipment right there at Minicash Sales these are wonderful people Zach and Joanne and the crew right across from the Burley Airport at 1321 East Main in Burley. And by the way, they also have some great doors for your homes. I just bought a brand new door from Minicash's Sales. Super good people. 1321 East Main in Burley. Bringing you Dr. History and all the bad guys. All right. Another story. Okay. These robbers stopped a Rock Island train southbound from Wichita in 1894. Mm -hmm. And they had similar problems. I see. Okay. They were at, there was at least four of them, allegedly including a guy named Charlie Pitts of the James Younger gang. Whoever they were, they stopped the train all right, but then the operation came unraveled in a hurry. Well, when their demands to open the express car were ignored by the express agent, a guy named John Crosland, they detonated a stick of dynamite under the door. Oh, my. Now, stunned, Crosland played for time while guard Jake Harmon slipped out the back door of the car, moved through another car, and stepped quietly out into the night. Well, seeing a bunch of bandits outside the express car, including one who had a pistol, Harmon gave the shadowy pistol wave, waver a dose of buckshot. The pistol man went down, and in general panic followed. The rest of the bandits ran off into the darkness. One was captured immediately. Two were run down later and jailed. You're not talking about too many success stories here. <laughs> in fact, I'm not going to. <laughs> this is this is for those guys that are thinking of, of, run, of robbing a train now. Yeah. Okay, then there was a day when an outlaw gang st uh, stuck up the Southern Pacific at Fairbanks Station in Cochise County in Southern uh, Arizona. Oh, this should be a better story. Okay, the idea seems to have been to hide behind whatever citizens happened to be about the station and ransack the express car for what the bandits apparently expected to be a bunch of money. I see. Well, to They didn't have a clue, huh? They didn't. Now, to the gang's profound unhappiness, the express messenger on the outlaw's chosen night was a guy by the name of Jeff Milton, mm -hmm. sometime local police officer and Texas Ranger. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. And he's in Arizona. He's in Arizona. He's in the express car. Well, his reputation uh, uh, as, was a, as a formidable Arizona lawman and rancher. He was a good man, a good friend. Sorry about that. The horses are at the gate. <laughs> at least that wasn't my phone this time. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I say, Milton was a good guy, a rancher, Texas Ranger, but he didn't have a bit of compassion for outlaws. So as the train stood in the station at Fairbank, Milton handed down packages from the express car. Well, out of the crowd of bystanders, a voice ordered Milton to throw up your hands and come out of there. Uh-oh. Well, Milton reached inside the car for his shotgun, and in his... Milton style answered the, vo the voice he said if there's anything in here you want come and get it this is not good no well the response was a blast of rifle fire out of the crowd around the train yeah so a bullet ripped the hat from Milton's head more shots smashed into his left arm and knocked him down oh man so here he is laying down in the express car in the car in the car holding a shotgun yeah so even hurt Milton was not the surrendering kind I see he had his shotgun now uh huh but he worried about hitting some innocent civilian yeah. if he simply sprayed a fan of buckshot at the robbers. Why haven't they run? <laughs> well, there's still a bunch of people milling around. That's dumb. Outside. So still, he wasn't going to give away the express company's cargo without a fight. So in the event the, in the, event the robbers, uh, they solved this dilemma for him. Now, they were sure that Milton was out of action. Yeah. So the outlaws rushed the express car door, mm -hmm. expecting easy pickings over the dead body of, or badly wounded Milton. Yeah. Uh, well, it came as kind of a nasty 
nasty surprise when Milton, shooting one-handed, opened fire with his shotgun at the first man to stand with the car. Uh-oh. The first outlaw through the door was a guy, I love this, his name was Three-Fingered Jack Dunlap. And it changed. <laughs> well, anyway, he took uh, buckshot in various portions of his anatomy, uh, where of in, cor- in the course of time he died. I see. And now in another buckshot wounded a second band, uh, bandit, one guy, his name was Bravo. Uh, get this, it shot in the uh, hindquarters. In the hindquarters. In the kind, presumably, presumably as he turned to run. I see. Uh, he lost all his enthusiasm for the robbery. I can imagine. <laughs> well, the remaining three bandits, they uh, uh, started shooting the express car with rifle bullets, but Milton was on the floor between, between two trunks. Yeah. So uh, he was kind of losing consciousness. and Well, kind of. How many times had he been yeah, shot? Yeah, I mean, he was losing blood. So yeah. he was out cold, but the surviving bandits entered the car. They found they could not open the safe. They had not been bright enough to bring some dynamite and Milton had thrown away the safe's keys before he... Wait a minute, he's still laying on the floor though. Yeah, he's still there. Unconscious. How come they... Oh, he's unconscious. Yeah, he's unconscious. But he'd thrown the keys uh, somewhere so they couldn't find it and that was the end of that story. Well, just a minute. You can't just leave me hanging like a Saturday morning cereal. You've got to tell me what happened. That's the end of the story. (laughs) They didn't get the money. You don't know if Mr. Milton came to. Well, I think he did. You don't know if the bad guys got caught. Uh, No, but it's a good story. (laughs) All right, here we go with another one. Okay. Trouble of a different kind jumped out at the gang that stopped the AT and SF train uh, in Missouri in 1894. The stopping was the easy part. All you had to do was wave a red lantern if you were the station agent, and the train obediently pulled to a halt. Well, the bandits opened fire on the engineer, a guy named da- uh, Prescott, and wounded him, and then they went back to the express car where they expected to find their bonanza. Well, what they found instead was a car full of Santa Fe detectives. This isn't good either. No. They'd been tipped off about the robbery. Oh, boy. Well, Charlie Abrams, the leader of the outlaw gang, went down full of holes Good old Charlie. rather quickly. Yep. Uh, a second outlaw managed to get clear, but he was captured shortly afterward. The remaining bandits, two of them got away clean, which tells you something about the shooting of the detectives. <laughs> Not real accurate. <laughs> so, now, uh, a somewhat better day, in this case, night, uh, for the forces of the law was in 1895, train number three of the Cincinnati Southern Railroad was stopped by a lantern-waving figure just north of uh, Greenwood, Kentucky mm-hmm. at a place where the right-of-way ran through a deep cut. Kentucky? In Kentucky. Really? So the lantern-waver turned out to be a pistol-packing bandit and mm-hmm. he was followed by three equally bad guys. Yeah. Well, the four may have been rank amateurs at train robbing business because they headed straight for the baggage car. Oh, my God. Maybe thinking it was the express car. What so, were they thinking? So right away you got to know these guys uh, didn't know what they were doing. Oh, boy. Well, as the bandits, bandits rummaged through the baggage car, back in the passenger car, three men began to wonder what the delay was. And finally, they walked forward to find out. And they were a guy named Eddie, Outgood, and Griffin. And all three happened to be railroad detectives. Yeah, they did it again. They did it again. Yeah. Now, Outgood, the first in line, was confronted by a bandit at the steps of the baggage car. Hands up, ordered the robber, but Outgood went for his pistol, and all heck broke loose. One of the bandits took a bullet in the heart, which finished him off. A second managed to survive for about two hours, shot through the chest, and another was so badly shot up that he almost died. He almost died. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, almost. I don't know how long he lasted. So, anyway, the presence of the three detectives on the train was no accident, you see. Uh, They'd been warned about the robbery. Now, the informer was a guy named Sam Frazier. He was part of the gang and had ridden along on the raid that very night. Frazier had wisely elected to hold the outlaws' horses as part of the scheme, and so he managed to stay out of the line of fire. Uh huh. So, so he you w- would think that Moccasin Telegraph would spread around the globe and let these guys know that robbing trains is not a very good no, thing to do. No. Uh, uh, the sad thing is, uh, the men that w- the wo- the guys that were shot. Yeah. Uh, the wounded man was not abandoned at all. He was a hobo who, ha- who happened to find himself in the wrong place. See. Uh, Never should try to get a free ride. <laughs> well, he got a ride, but I think it was to the hospital. Holy Or smokes. somewhere. 
And so, he hadn't done a thing. No, he was just in the wrong place. Oh. So, okay, I've got a few more stories. We'll go till we run I'll out of time. You what, I'll tell you what, we'll make this one a real short one because i got a whole bunch of commercials. Okay. All right, i got okay. just this last one. All right. Okay, uh, I think this is the last one. Okay, well, outlaws did even worse when they tried to eliminate one of their major opponents, a quiet, retiring man named Fred Hans. Yeah. Hans was at various times a detective for the Union Pacific and for the federal government. In 1900, he worked for the North Northwestern Railroad, which in those days ran between Deadwood and Omaha. Now, this line uh, frequently hauled very large shipments of gold from the Deadwood mines, and it was Hans' job to keep these shipments safe. Well, the story goes that he was so good at his job that most outlaws steered clear of this train. Mm -hmm. Well, five outlaws Hans had been chasing paid the ultimate price for turning on the detective and laying an ambush for him. They managed to kill the detective's horse, so this wasn't even on the train. I see. They managed to kill the detective's Texas horse, but Hans, using, using the animal's carcass as a fort, pulled his two pistols, opened fire. He drove one round through an ambusher's heart, killed a second man's horse. He put another bullet through a, a third bandit's head, shot the fourth in the stomach. The fifth man, now horseless, widely, wisely gave up as uh, this was a bad job, and he surrendered. So this guy took on five, five guys. guys and killed four of them and... Uh, apprehended the you can't find bad guys anymore today that have uh, as inept an attitude as they have. <laughs> now, they, they, I guess that's why they didn't last too long. Holy smokes. And those are the great train robberies. That's just a few of them. I got a bunch more, but yeah. obviously we don't have time. Yeah, what was the picture you were going to oh, show let me? Let me show you these. Oh. Uh, Oli and... Oli. Now... Yeah. Holy cow. Which one's Oli? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, are they dead? Yes. Oh, they're holding them up. Yeah. They're dead. Oh, they're dead. Well, one guy's got a smile on his face. Well, as was the custom, they took a picture yeah. of the guys after they were dead before they oh, buried them. Oh, my goodness. They they look like they've had a rough night. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Yeah. They're not exactly <laughs> dressed Hollywood style, no, would you say? No, no. They, uh, they look a little rough. They have uh, a, a cosmetic problem. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and their eyes are closed. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you did it again. Now, are you learning to speak Chinese? You know, I'm attempting to get a few words down, like I'm lost and... Okay, no, okay stop right there. How do you say I'm lost in Chinese? Well, well I haven't got it yet. <laughs> I'm You're working still on lost. <laughs> I'm still lost. <laughs> Okay, but you're going to be going over there when? April 1st. April 1st. For two weeks. It, it, kind of fitting, April Fool's Day. Yeah, I know, that makes me nervous. I bet it does. <laughs> hey, but now you don't know how to order food in a restaurant or anything? No, I think I'll just probably point. Point. Well, how do you know what you're ordering, though? Well, I'm hoping they have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only hope. <laughs> you're going to be over there for two weeks. Or I'll say, I'll have what that guy's having. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I wish you a lot of luck. And I hope that it's successful. And you're going over quickly to visit with people that listen to this program. Right. A lot of the students, I'm going to be speaking to the students at Peking University. Peking How do you University. think they'll respond to you after they know what you look like? Well, that makes me a little nervous, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're going to expect. <laughs> okay. God bless you, man. You're going to be here next week. Though. Yes, I will right. be. You're uh, going to be bringing in a new rice dish. Yes, something. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Well, God bless you. That is Dr. History, brought to you and yours by our friends at Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main in Burley, right across from the Burley Airport. Zach and Joanne, the whole crew serving you at Minicasha Sales. You stop in and see them today. We really want to say to Minikesha Sales how much we appreciate the sponsoring of this segment, Dr. History. Hold on just a minute, Dr. History, and I'll visit with you. Uh, big sale going on tomorrow, Doc. You better get over there. U.S. Auction, Best in the West Auction Company, is going to have the Magic Valley Auction Sale tomorrow, March 11th, and it's located 480 West, 100 South of Paul, and sale time, sale time, 9.30 tomorrow morning, and lunch by the Montana Steakhouse. Who that it's going to be good. They're going to have tractors and uh, service trucks, pickups, trailers, hay equipment, grain equipment, beet and potato equipment. Big, big sale. Magic Valley auction sale tomorrow, and that's 480 West, 100 South of Paul. Don't forget sale time, 930. Buy the best in the West, the U.S. auction. It's going to be a ripping good sale. Oh, and real quick, let me get this in because... 
Every week, uh, we have a segment on Thursdays called Cache County School Days, and I want to remind you that the bond election is today. It started earlier this morning, and we want to say thank you to A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. They're having all their spring clothes right now. They've got them out on the racks, and of course, they're ready for Easter, and they've got 20% off items like all the games and the toys and the books and everything. Stop into A Child's World, 1308 Overland in Burley. And don't forget to Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland in Burley. For over 14 years, the Ambulatory Surgery Center saving residents in the area thousands of dollars in same-day surgery procedures. Just call them and talk to them, 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and a child's world bringing you school days in Cache County. And I'll be back after this break. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb. Oh, thank you very much and welcome back. We're going to get to our guest. I know I'm running a little bit late this morning and I apologize to the guest for holding, but I'll be right there. Don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. I was over there again yesterday. Oh, my, do they know the sports medicine and all the exercises and the hydrotherapy pool with the treadmill in the bottom. Oh, they are working me, helping you get back to being you. You betcha they're doing wonders with my knee and my hip. Nick Greenwell, physical therapist, and all the great folks that work there at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. The number to call for an appointment, 678 Nine one. You be sure and get a hold of them today. And uh, I just have a little start at the gate with my racetrack sound on my tel- cell phone, and it says that Mr. Andrew Boston is ready on the air. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? Uh, good. Thanks for me on. No, it's my pleasure. I've got so many questions for you, and you've written a brand new book called Iran's Final Solution for Israel, The Legacy of Shiite Islamic Jew Hatred in Iran. Um, I guess That's my final title, right? Yeah, I was going to say, it only takes a half an hour to get the title out. I'm sure the book is probably five times longer. But uh, let me ask you this, Andrew. In your study of Iran and your study of what's going on with them in the Middle East, when you got into all the facts and the uh, stories for this book, I'll bet it kind of shocked you as to how powerful and insidious this country really is. Well, well, I, I, I guess the bigger shock, honestly, was was uh, the fact that this negotiations process had been launched. Uh, period. Uh, no, knowing knowing the ideology of the regime, knowing the unfortunate history of Iran when it has been empowered in the past, and I'm going back a half millennium, how it's behaved towards its na- neighbors, towards its own citizens, uh, in terms of the the the, the brand of 12 or Shiite Islam, which became dominant in Iran beginning in 1501, lasted essentially until 1925. We had this period of you know, secularization. It was autocratic, but it was secularization, westernization, and then that was, that was popularly rejected, and you return to this pretty ugly uh, Shiacratic, uh, uh, theocratic uh, Shiite Islam, uh, and that's what we've been stuck with ever since. I mean, it's, it's, it's jihadism is literally embedded in its constitution. Uh, it's a virulently anti-Western, anti-Semitic uh, society. Um, as Netanyahu pointed out in his speech, uh, the supreme leader, the theocrat, the Ayatollah Khamenei, um, literally puts out anti-Semitic, genocidal anti-Semitic statements on his Twitter account. I um, mean, it also refers to Jews in particular, but, but all non-Muslims in general, as being unclean. The, you know, the, the, the word is not just. This is a, another Shiite doctrine. And so this is a very dehumanizing way to look at non-Muslims from the Shiite perspective. Yeah. And it's not a great leap from dehumanization to destruction. 
Let me ask you an obvious question, but yet I think a lot of people in my audience probably are asking the same thing. Why? Why is there such a profound, distinct, and finality to their hatred for Israel and then also coming across to us in the United States? Why do they hate Israel yeah, I, so I, bad? Again, I think it gets into their, this is, this is their, this is their unfortunate religious worldview. Uh, it, it's hard to avoid that. Uh, in other words, um, they they view Shiite Islam, which you know is, is a subsect of, of of Islam in general. The Sunnis are are much more numerous, but they believe that you know Islam itself went astray uh, with uh, the so-called caliphs that succeeded uh, Islam's prophet Muhammad. Uh, they believe that the that the fourth caliph uh, Ali. Should have, should, have, should have produced a line that led directly to them, and in fact, they argue, does lead directly to them. They should be the leaders of the, of the Islamic world, so that's their conflict with, with, the, with the Sunnis. In terms of, in terms of Jews and, and, and Westerners, um, you know, it, it, Islam's doctrine towards, towards non-Muslims is very discriminatory, uh, very, very debasing. Uh, there's very anti-Semitism in the Quran, in the in the so-called traditions of, of Muhammad uh, and in the earliest biographies of Muhammad and Muhammad's behaviors, at least according to the Muslim sources, were variantly anti-Semitic. Uh, he massacred, pillaged, and enslaved uh, Jewish tribes, which is reported triumphantly in the Muslim accounts. You know, there was a controversy a few years ago when when uh, Muslim Brotherhood president Egypt was still in charge in in in. Um, in, in that country, and, and, and it came out that he referred to the Jews as apes and pigs. Hmm. Well, that's a Quranic verse. That's yeah. in the fifth chapter of the Quran, the 60th verse. Um, Muhammad used that epithet towards uh, a Jewish tribe that he eventually uh, conquered and, and subdued, and then personally beheaded their surrendered male uh, 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 leaders uh, and, 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 and fighters. Um, so these are these are themes that are that are hardwired into Islam. Now Israel, and since its independence and its recreation as a as a Jewish state, um, is completely anathema to this worldview. It, it has to be it has to be wiped out to allow this process of, of regeneration uh, of the Islamic Caliphate uh, to really take hold. So Sunni and Shia, by the way, share this view. But, but that's, that's, the, that's the ultimate goal. So Iran wants to eradicate Israel as a stepping stone. And then, of course, they'll deal with the, as we are referred to, as, as the greater Satan. Let me ask you this, Dr. Bostom. When you talk about the political leadership of the Ayatollahs in Iran and, and the, uh, the government hierarchy versus the people, what do you see as a difference from the people's attitudes and the government attitude? Is there a distinct and profound difference in the way they feel? I, I think, I think, to be honest about it, we have, we, we don't have to speculate too much. We have hard data. You know, Pew has gone into Iran, Gallup has gone into Iran, they've gone to all their neighbors. We begin to get a very, I think, alarming picture of these, of these attitudes uh, within Iran and, and within its neighbors. By the way, Iraq and Afghanistan, which, you know, we liberated. So if you want to argue that, well, you know, the Iranians are so controlling, how can we get good polling data? I, I, I'm not so sure that that's true. But regardless, at any rate, 83% of, of the Iranians still want the Sharia, Islamic law, to, to, to be their form of, of governance. I was shocked that the number was still that high after these last 36 years of, you know, hanging homosexuals from cranes and brutalizing women and brutalizing non-Muslim minorities and amputation for theft and stoning adulterers. I mean, just to put down the list of, apparently, that hasn't dissuaded enough of the population. Uh, so 83% still wanted the Sharia to be the law of the land. 72% didn't think that there was any evidence of religious fanaticism in, in, in Iran. So I'm not very sanguine about the, about the prospects for change. On the other hand, Zeb, that does mean you know, a country of 75 million people, if 17% don't want the Sharia, that's not a trivial number of human beings. That's 12, 13 million people. And, and, I, and, and my heart goes out to them. But... But we have to be realistic in terms of, 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 of what the attitudes are. And I think that the biggest problem that the Iranian population as a whole has with the government is corruption. But unfortunately, 
you know, that, 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 that may be well and good, but that's not going to affect us. It, it, it's, these, it's these attitudes towards the Sharia that, that we, re, we really have to worry about. And the best metrics we have are that these attitudes, unfortunately, are still very, very popular. Let me ask you this thought. Um, basically, with the Obama administration thumbing their nose at our Senate and our Congress and saying they're going to come up with a deal on nuclear weapons with Iran, aren't they really negotiating with the devil because this country absolutely has Armageddon in mind and they don't care who stands in their way? Absolutely. Although, although I, you know, as you can hear, I, I'm not exactly, you know, a, a, a Pollyanna about things. But I, I must say, um, I am very heartened, at least briefly, by this this GOP letter uh, championed by the new uh, by the new senator from 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 Arkansas, yes. Tom Cotton, which which is really throwing a monkey wrench into these dangerous and delusive negotiations. I, I, I think this is an outstanding development, Fred, and I really hope that um, you know the public rallies to, 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 to support it because um, you know if you take a look at the text of the letter, he's simply pointing out the constitutional norms that exist uh, and warning you know the Iranian regime that you know if, if, if this is some sort of a deal directly between. Um, President Obama and Ayatollah Khamenei, who, by the way, Obama has been writing to, uh, then, then, it, then, it, then it won't pass muster and, regardless, will be revoked, uh, potentially. Uh, so, I, I think this kind of, this kind of digging in, by at least these 47 uh, GOP senators, is an encouraging sign in, other, in an otherwise very, very bleak uh, period in our history. Uh, final thought on uh, Iran with Obama, but I'm, I'm just very curious. In your study to write this book, are you finding Obama himself personally fearing or being friendly to the jihadists and especially the government of Iran? Fear or friendly? Oh, I, I, I think he's I think he's far too sympathetic to their so-called grievances, and I think it comes out of his very warped uh, worldview, uh, which was inculcated in him um, uh, as particularly you know the hard, hard left. Uh, uh, America is the world you know worst uh, offender kind of mentality, and there's also we can't deny this. There's also his, his sort of gut level sympathy to the Islamic world because he did have a nominal Muslim upbringing as a child. I, I, and you don't just throw that out. I mean, you know, we, we have to accept his adult sort of conversion to Christianity, albeit a sort of you know, hard left version of liberation theology, whatever it was. We have to accept that. But he's also going to be sympathetic to Islam for, I think, very emotional reasons given his childhood. Mm -hmm. When people get your book, Iran's Final Solution for Israel, and read the last page and close the cover, what do you want them to take away from what they read in your book? Hmm. Uh, I, I would argue even, even in the updated preface, which I put out uh, at, the, at the end of this past November, look, it's, we, we, don't have any, we don't have any alternatives. The, the best of the bad alternatives right now is that the United States needs to gird its loins and destroy the known nuclear infrastructure in Iran, which we could do in an evening, uh, in an evening of combined cruise missile and massive ordnance uh, penetrator attacks. And we can defend ourselves. We still have a highly capable military. But there's, there's, the negotiations are just going to eventually lead to them having nuclear weapons with an international perimeter. And that's dangerous. Short of us doing it, if it has to be done sooner, I think Israel... Uh, could do some damage to the program and maybe delay it a couple of years, but they just don't have our capacity. And, and you know, sometimes this kind of, we have a historical record. You know, four times that there's been nuclear preemption till now. Nazi Germany, Iraq actually did it to Iran and their primitive reactor in the 1980s. Israel obviously did it to Iraq. Israel did it again to Syria. None of those four countries, at least till now, as far as we know, have nuclear weapons. This kind of preemption works. I will say this, I cannot wait to get a copy of the book, and please tell me, Dr. Boston, where is the book available? All bookstores? Yeah, the, book, the book is available basically at, 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 at Amazon. That's the best way uh, to get the book. They can, they can read the entire um, uh, prep, uh, updated preface at, at my blog, which is just www.andrewbawson.org slash blog. Um, and I've written you know, extensively about the contents of the book, 
uh, at uh, Pajamas Media, had a long piece at Breitbart last week. Uh, so they can certainly get the gist of, 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 the, of the book you know, from those sources. But, yeah, sure, they, they, it's available on Amazon. I will have the book in my possession before too long, and then I'll read it and have you hopefully back on the program. And I want to say so much. I appreciate your taking the time to be on our show this morning, Dr. Andrew Boston, with the book, Iran's Final Solution for Israel. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. I've got to get a copy of that, and uh, we all should be informed as to what's happening with an evil, evil power and country in the Middle East. And that's Iran. I've got to pay some bills and get some weather forecast in here. But first of all, I want to remind everybody about Burley Glass, 1029 Overland Avenue in Burley, always working hard to provide great service to all the communities in Magic Valley. Update your windows and check on the vinyl windows that can help increase the energy efficiency of your home by two to three times. You call Leslie and Gentle Ben, my old buddy at Burley Glass. And the number six seven eight one four five nine. Thank you, Burley Glass, 1029. 29 Overland in Burley. Hey, it's time for Michael Rogers weather, and I'm going to talk to you just real quick about what they have at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Oh, oh my, they've got a $300 tax return meat package. This is really something. They've got beef like uh, the patties and the rump roast and the New York steak, and they got the pork with the pork chops and the bacon and the brats, and they've got chicken and cheese, everything in this tax return meat package, $300 is going to buy you a lot of delicious eating. They sell taste one bite at a time at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Telephone number to call, 324-7657. And now here is Michael Rogers' weather. Michael Rogers weather. Yeah, I think you, you should get ready. You want to catch the sunrise this morning. Now the sun's going to come up right between the twin right between the twin towers. Okay, between Mount uh, Catch Peak and Mount Harrison. Set your camera, put it on ISO 100 aperture. I put it on f11 because you want it dark so you can catch the orange glow around that. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm a weather guy, and I'm sick and tired of sounding like a weather guy. I need to talk about something else to tell you it's going to be a nice day. I've been doing it for 30 years. The radio pros hate it. I've been doing it that way. So far, it works. Uh, the good news also is going to get up to about 70 degrees. How about that in this March? 41 for the overnight low. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. All right, Michael. Thank you. We finally got you on there. Thank you very much to Scarrow's Meats. We sell taste one bite at a time, and they're located at 331 North Road, Jerome. Now, here's the number to call, 324-7657. You call them today. Uh, a couple of notes that I want to get on here this morning, and uh, there's going to be a Veterans Administration Benefits Community Briefing, and that's going to be on March 13th, and that's Friday, uh, 12 to 1 p.m. and then 6 to 7 p.m. at the VFW Hall, 554 Highland Avenue in Burley, and I understand that Veterans Service Officer Georgia Greenwell will be available to answer any personal questions. And also, next week week on the 19th. Don't forget that at the King's Little Theater at 2100 Park Avenue in Burley, there's going to be a special meeting on how pending free trade agreements with the European Union and Pacific Rim countries will result in economic political union with the loss of individual freedoms and liberty and national independence. And uh, this is going to be at uh, 7 p.m. at the King's Little Theater on March 19th. And the guest speaker is Arthur Thompson, and we're going to have him on our program the day before, so don't forget that. Also, real quick, another note uh, for all the sportsmen in the area, Sportsmen for Fish and Wildlife 12th Annual Magic Valley Chapter Rally for Wildlife Banquet and Fundraiser is going to be held this Saturday, March 14th at the Canyon Crest Event Center starting at 5.30 and then dinner at 6.45. Don't you miss it. Hey, by the way, too, we've got some really good folks that uh, they 
can build anything. They are the true professionals. Streamline Precision, 120 South, 100 West of Burley, right next to Dot Foods. Tim Vaughn and the rest of the crew. Now, I'm going to give you the number right now, and I want you to write it down and call them for estimates. You better believe it, 431-7314. They have got vast experience in industrial development that includes dairies and feedlots and food processing companies, multiple other agricultural applications. Believe me, they are are good. And right now, this construction company is really busy trenching for all the pipelines and doing a lot of concrete work this spring. Concrete work for the dairies and ranches, mangers and feed alleys. And they're currently building the new funk dairy in Murtaugh. They know what they're doing. Contact them today. Streamline Precision at 120 South, 100 West of Burley. Call Tim for estimates at 431-7314. You call them today. I want to remind you that tomorrow on the program, being Wednesday, we are going to be blessed with uh, Dave Beagle from Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, we're also going to have uh, about the over-regulations of what the Obama's trying to do. We're going to have Christine Harbin Hansen on the program. And we are also going to have a guest that's going to be talking about what's going on in Ferguson, Missouri, with the Department of Justice trying to downplay and denigrate their police force force and uh, threatening federal involvement. So all that's coming up on tomorrow's program. By the way, don't forget there is a huge, huge tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations right now serving you. And this big tire sale involves passenger tires like the Eclipse, all season traction, advanced design tread, all on sale right now. And for the people that own pickups and SUVs, They've got the Wildcat AT2, traction in all seasons, smooth ride, and that tire is on sale. Go in and check out all the great tire buys. Don't forget they've got the very best in brake service, the very best in front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, all of this and much, much more, along with convenient credit for all their tires and services at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert. Don't forget Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. We're going to wrap it up, and a uh, reminder, too, that uh, on Thursday, we're going to be having Gail Trotter back on the air, and uh, she's going to be she's one of our favorite guests to have on the program at 1030, and on Thursday, Thursday also, I might remind you that we're going to have uh, Dog Nation, and uh, we're going to be talking to the people with streamlined precision, so we've got a lot of things planned over the next couple of days. Uh, Gina, everything over at the studio okay? Everything going well this morning, I take it? Yeah, I'm having a good time over here. What are you doing? Uh, I am training Damon, and uh, he's doing a good job. And then, of course, I bounce around between all the studios. And that you call and consider a good time. <laughs> hey, we want to say thank you to everybody, and don't forget to our lunch bunch. I've got to wrap this up so you don't call me during the day and say, when's lunch bunch? Well, it's going to be next Thursday the 19th at Denny's Restaurant in Burley. Don't forget that. And uh, we have plenty of door prizes we're going to be giving away from Walmart and Smith's Food King and Handsome Mortuary, but put it on your calendar at 11.30 next Thursday the 19th. Not this week. People have confused it with being this week. No, no, no. It's next week on the 19th at 1130 at Denny's Restaurant. Until tomorrow morning at 806, Zebeth Ranch, God bless. The way things were are the way things ought to be. We'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs>